Welcome back to the MoCast Podcast. I'm your co-host, L.A. Rice. I'm a house basketball all-star and house basketball champion, switching it up because I am also a two-time state champion, Legion baseball player. Did the basketball first because I've been playing basketball lately. We'll get into that. Then I'm a two-time Legion state state champion, Legion baseball player, V roll Vienna 180, baby. It's 1237. It is now Monday morning, January 11th. Another early recording for us, CB. I'm always joined by CB. How you doing, my friend? My co-host. How you doing? Early recording for us. Early recording. I am doing outstanding. New adjective today. Outstanding. Maybe I've used that one before. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but but one time uh, state champion roll 180 shout out 180 of course uh, 253 in bowling just you know just a couple of washed out I won't say washed for for you I'll only speak for myself because I like you said the basketball um, but yeah man I'm, I'm doing uh, outstanding I'll say um, I'll say I'll say 7.9 just to keep you on your toes because I've just been living in the eights can always improve exactly you can always improve and you're, you're too nice i am washed not as washed as drew Brees. like we will get into when we get into the nfl but as always we are presented by good griefs check us out thegoodgriefs.com cb put out an article on blake snell you darvish a, a week or two ago i put out a video game article check that out huge week huge week obviously a lot going on in the political world but sports, we love sports. A ton happened. So we are going to sit back, enjoy. The world is great when you are listening to the MoCast, hopefully. And um, a lot of sports going on. Ton of baseball to talk about. The best shortstop in the game got traded to CB's team, the New York Mets. We're going to get into that. A lot of other MLB news, including the Nats signing Kyle Schwarber, like we've talked about him on here before we even put out a video on our instagram and twitter about him at mocast pod follow that if you are not then we're going to get into our who's hot and who's not of the week our shout out of the week nfl super wild card weekend we're going to get into that they Break were hammering down. that the whoa. it was always super it was always super. super wild card weekend super wild card weekend they wanted to drill that into our heads all weekend six games we're going to talk about every game in the order that they were in, but the Buccaneers versus the football team, that will be last because we had the one, the only, the Vienna legend. If you're from Vienna, of course, you know him, Noah Beach. Great time with him talking about the football team. And of course, a lot of Taylor Heineke, the man. Then we're going to quick preview the divisional round. A little bit about the NBA, just a little bit, just a smidge. Always got to talk about the NBA. Then our Mo Money segment, week 13 with our boy E. Noon. Chris Blake is a wizard. He is a witch. Of course, that bet hit. We will talk about it more on Mo Money, but Chris <laughs> had a pick that hit. Plus 1,100 odds, plus 11 units, Chris. What the heck? I mean, was it, what's your problem, man? That was weird. What's my problem? I told you. I said Microsoft stock at $1.50. You know what? I was laughed out of the building. I was laughed out of the building. Um, and you know what? It's it's just kind of funny. It's kind of funny that we all picked the Rams Seahawks one. That one didn't hit. And then the Titans Ravens one did hit. And I even said, I said, this this is the least likely one out of the two. I know. Um, but I I sent you, I sent a picture in our group chat with E Noon the shirt I was wearing. I, I don't have real money on this. The, okay. I, there were sweat stains. If the people want, I'll post it. I don't think you want to see it. I'll put it on our uh, on our Twitter. I don't think you want to see it because it's just a sweaty shirt. But I was, you couldn't talk to me in those yeah. final two minutes. I was just locked in on the couch. It was, it was incredible. Yeah, we don't put real money on these picks, but we are heavily, heavily, heavily invested in our Mo Money picks because if you guys put money on it, we are there behind you. We are always there supporting you, but Mo Money, we're going to talk about that. And then our top five of the week, top five football players we wish we could have seen play. Football players we wish we could have seen play. 
our top five of the week. You're going to love that list. You're going to love that list. A lot of great classic players that we wish we could have seen in person live, but we're, I was born in 2000 CB 2001. So huge episode, ton of MLB, ton of NFL. Our boy Noah beach joined us, our weekly segments, NBA, Mo money, top five. Let's get to it. MoCast episode 41. All right, welcome to MoCast episode 41, Quarante Uno. Let's go. Here we go. You said it best. My team, my NL team, my adopted team in the National League, the New York Mets, uh, after the Padres set the world on fire, the Mets setting the world on fire a little bit with Steve Cohen making the moves, making the moves, Francisco Lindor. Carlos Cookie Carrasco going over to the New York Mets from Cleveland. Uh, I'm through the roof. I'm over the moon. H- however you want to say it, whatever you like to say, I am there. LA, uh, one to 10. How scared are you? Uh, I'm a one because every season, I mean, every single season, the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Mets, they were the projected. Super Bowl winner, projected MLB World Series winner every single year since the day I was born. So I'm feeling okay. I mean, it's just another year. All right. Just another year. We'll see. Old takes exposed. Uh, on We'll come back to this on uh, September 24th when the Mets uh, clinch the division. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. But, Chris, this trade. Okay. Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. By the way, we're going to get into Carrasco in a minute. He is so slept on, by the way. We're going to get into him in a minute. Cancer survivor, Cookie Carrasco. You're just amazing, my friend. You really are. There's only a few things that I hate in the world. Hate. I barely, barely use that strong word. That is a strong, strong world. Do you know the three things that I hate? Let's say I hate three different things. Okay. Um, Brady. I don't hate Brady. I don't hate Brady. I I strongly Uh, dislike Tom Brady. He's amazing. Is it, is it a team, a player? uh, One one of them's a team. One of them's a team. The Philadelphia Phillies. Okay. Philadelphia Phillies (laughs) and the New York Mets. I hate, I hate these guys. Another thing that I hate, I hate cucumbers and pickles. Like I said, I don't dislike cucumbers and pickles. That's I a mess. Pickles are nice. No, they're terrible. They're terrible. And the third thing I hate, Shakespeare. Shakespeare having to do that in high school is the absolute worst. Reading those books. By the way, I'm in college. I'm a finance major. I know this is just going totally away from this because, I mean, maybe if you're a psychologist or something listening to this, Chris asked if I'm scared. Now I'm talking about Shakespeare when, when we're trying to talk about the Mets. I'm just trying to avoid this. I'm going to be honest. But I'm a finance major in college. I have to read a book called Antigone. I can't understand a word that they're saying in this book. I have to read this for school. I, I, I thought it was two brothers who were going off to war. It's two sisters whose two brothers died in war. I mean, I just don't know what's going on. I'm not talking about F war. I'm talking about real war Shakespeare. F- oh, nice. I mean, I don't know, but Chris, I'm scared. This is a four to six war player, Francisco Lindor, going from the Cleveland Indians to the New York Mets, and he's going to be a free agent. And you know who has a lot of money? Steve Cohen in the New might York not Mets. Be, might not be for long a uh, free agent. I mean, it could be, hate to bring it up, not the topic, so we're not going to talk about it. Could be a Mookie situation. That's he's there for two, he's there for two, three weeks, and uh, you know, know, next thing you know, he's there for the next, uh, I don't know, eight, nine years. You know, ten think years. Of, something think like about that. how much Cleveland loved this guy. I follow this baseball YouTuber on uh, on YouTube, and he just loved this guy, and the whole fan base just. How can you not love Mr. Smiles, Francisco yeah. Lindor? I'm not going to love him starting next year, but how can you? not love him he's gonna he's gonna sign a long-term extension with the Mets I'm trying to mentally prepare myself I have been mentally prepping all week but one of the biggest things I'm shocked about in this trade I mean what did Cleveland get CB nothing man yeah yeah 
I mean, it, Ahmed Rosario, like in. I am so his... sad Ahmed Rosario is out of the division. I am so sad that I cannot watch him hit against yeah. us because nothing Yeah, that's happens. tough. That's tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really does seem like it's a good deal for the Mets. Um, like you said, we haven't even talked about Carrasco yet, but they, they didn't really give up too much. I mean, they didn't give up, you know, a top two, three prospect in their system. Um, they are right up against that luxury tax threshold. So we'll see. We'll see if Cohen cares about that. I mean, he said he's going to spend big. Uh, we'll find out, but they're right up against that $210 million uh, after this trade. Um, after the signings they've made with, you know, Trevor May and, and all that. So we'll see where it goes from here. But Cookie Carrasco, I mean, like you said, he slept on. He, he had a sub three ERA last year. I know it wasn't a full season, but come on. Battling cancer. Yeah, he or he's I, I believe he's in remission now. Thank goodness. He's a cancer survivor and he still balls out. He's 33 years old. His career ERA is 3.77, Chris, but since 2014, I mean, this guy's been basically just one of the most slept on, solidified starters in the major leagues. He has some injury issues. He really does. He either pitches a full season or he misses like 10 to 12 games. But obviously, like I said, he had cancer. He's had a 3.41 ERA. In his last 194 games, 3.1 or 4-1, 3.41 ERA, 1,004 innings, 1,141 strikeouts. He's got great stuff. And yeah, he really is slept on in this deal. I mean, he's going to be their four starter. And that's a lot better than what they had last season. Rick Porcello and Michael Waka, I can tell you that. Your boys, your boys. Oh, my. If the Nationals sign Rick Porcello, Chris. We're going to get into Schwarber in a minute, but if they sign Rick Porcello, I don't know what I would do with myself. You want a, you want a fun fact? Yeah. Zips has Francisco Lindor projected the third most F war of all hitters in baseball for 2021, assuming a full 162 gets played. They have him behind Mike Trout and Alex Bregman. They have him one spot ahead of Juan Soto. They have him two spots ahead of Mookie Betts. I mean, uh, LA above Soto. I mean, this is uh, this is brutal for you. It's a great move, of course. Uh, doesn't too much matter the return right now because it's it's Francisco Lindor, but. It's it seems like considering the return too, just a phenomenal trade for the Mets, of course. I mean, how can you even deny it? No doubt about it. He has so much power. He doesn't strike out that much. He's consistent. He is so consistent. Got a great glove, by the way. We're not even talking about his glove. I mean, every single season is WRC plus is 115 or better. His F war, Chris, I'm going to read you his last four full seasons. 2016, 5.5, 5. 2017, 5.7, 2018, 7.6, 2019, 4.4 4 F4. His career OPS, 833 for a shortstop. This guy is a superstar, and he is only 26 years old. 27 now. He just turned 27. He's 27 years old. Ton of power. Great glove. And if I'm a New York Mets fan, I'd be over the moon. Over the moon. Because Steve Cohen, new owner, he's talking a big game, and he got the superstar. And I don't think the Mets are done. I think they – George Springer, I don't know, but I don't think they're done. But, I mean, Carlos Carrasco and Francisco Lindor for not – obviously, those are good prospects. I think Ahmed Rosario stinks. But Jimenez, the shortstop, they've got some – uh They've got a good guy there. He's only 22, I believe. Showed some flashes last season. Josh Wolf and Isaiah Green. We're going to have to wait and see. But what a great trade. I hate to say it. What a great Mets. trade. Hate to That's say. now third in projected F4 among all teams. Only behind the, uh, the NL West beasts in the Dodgers and Padres in that order. Hey, uh, just, just ahead of the Yankees. There's still a bunch of free agents. Yeah. But Mets are third in all of baseball. But like right I'm now. saying, 
That's pleading my case. Every single season, this team is the World Series champion. And then what happens? Something happens. Broken clock, Something right happens. twice a day. That's all I'm saying. This Something could be happens. the time. That's a good one. Something this could be the time. But yeah, it's scary, man. And if I'm if I'm you, if I'm met other Mets fans, I'm I'm very excited about this. I I I am honestly pretty scared. But something always happens to the New York Mets meme. Something always happens. Can we do a quick uh five second moment of silence for Cleveland fans? Sorry about that, Cleveland. Uh, big, hey, big win today with the Browns. So yeah, uh, that's awesome for you guys. Sweet. It stinks, man. I, I can't imagine being a Cleveland Indian or a Kansas City Royal fan. K- Tampa Bay Ray, every time you get a superstar, you know you're just saying, how much longer are we going to have this guy before he leaves? It is sad. It is sad. Thanks for not including the Red Sox there. Yeah, you guys, you know, <laughs> next year, next year when we have this talk and uh, Devers will be traded or, or something like no, that. Well, yeah, when the Indians are trading uh, Jose Ramirez or their name next year, it's probably going to be the Spiders. And then, yeah, the Devers is going to be traded like you just. If said. we trade Devers, I will, <laughs> I will cry. You're not I will any cry money. on the podcast. I will cry on the podcast, confirmed. Um, okay. Let's do some other MLB news, some uh, some more minor news um, with some signings and maybe some trade talks. Dodgers re-signed Blake Trine and got you know slipped under the radar a little bit, uh, but I think it's a good move, solid move uh, based on what he showed last year. A little bit of a a bounce back year for him. No doubt, no doubt. Great signing for them. Had a terrible year two seasons ago. Unbelievable three years ago. Had a great bounce back year last year. And, you know, the Dodgers, they just keep adding up. But, yeah, this one slipped under the cracks. Um, obviously, with everything that's been going on this week, would have been bigger news in the baseball world, at least, if uh, it was a lighter news week. But, yeah, great signing for them. Minor league season also uh, delayed for double A in Class A. They're now going to go to spring training at the same time as uh, when AAA and MLB go into spring training. So, uh, you know, we, we like to advocate for minor leagues on here. We like to show them some love, Eric Sim, all that. Um, so, yeah, kind of uh, kind of disappointing. But, I mean, given the circumstances, you know. Yeah, I think this shows that obviously they're the first domino to fall, but the MLB, I'm scared that it's going to get pushed back. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, MoCast, I don't know how you can't be a, a non-huge advocate for the ML, for the minor leaguers. Like you said, Eric Sim, Zach Walters, we had great conversations with them about their minor league careers and how poorly they're treated. It's unbelievable. But yeah, I mean, minor league guys, I, I know it's tough right now, but just keep grinding. <sighs> so tough for them so tough yeah. right now and so many people but so tough for them right now how about your nats though how about your nats a little bit uh we'll we'll turn it to the positive side how i don't about know your nats? maybe yeah maybe <laughs> we'll turn it to a different subject who knows uh, if it's more positive well what do you think about this before before I, I i get on my pedestal here what do you think about this deal i think i think you could use the upside in the lineup. I know you sent some stats earlier. It wasn't maybe as bad as as uh, we thought it was going to be last year with the lineup, but I don't hate it uh, as much as I think you do uh, based on what you just said. But Kyle Schwarber, I mean, the past few years, if we take out last year, well, I'll include last year. So since, uh, since 2017, 1.7 F war. 3.2, 2.6, and then last year, 0.4, 60-game season. It's not going to be as high, but he also didn't do as well last year uh, yeah. as he he has. So I think uh, it's not it's not terrible. Um, the defense is okay. It's, it's not great, not terrible. Um, so I think it's a fine move. One-year deal, whatever. Um, and if he gets back to, you know, how he was producing in 2018 and yeah. he – 
he slugs 30 homers for you guys. You can't really be mad at that. That's it's it's an if. It's an if, but it's not crazy. Like the saying goes, you can never have a bad one year deal. But this is a bad one year deal. This is a bad one year deal. No, I'm kidding. But by the way, if you're listening to this, to this for the first time and don't know what F4 is, we talk about it all the time. We're not these analytical uh, you know, analytical gurus. We look at the analytics, but F4 is all the stats combined basically. So don't call us these analytical nerds even though they're doing great things. I mean, Hein Bloom, I don't know. But <sighs> When the Nationals introduced Kyle Schwarber, when they signed him, did you see their Instagram post? Did you see that? Did not. You know that something is not that great. When they posted the post, they said, welcome to D.C., Kyle Schwarber. They have four stats to show. It's a, it's a picture of him in the home run derby at Nats Park. Um, and then they showed four stats. They showed 38 home runs in 2019. 92 RBIs in 2019, 558 X slugging in 2019. Then they showed his hard hit percentage, 51.2%. You know that something's a little off with this guy if they're showing his hard hit percentage instead of his average. I know that if you're one of these guys that's heavy, heavy, heavy into the analytics, you're like average, who cares anymore? Kyle Schwarber cannot hit 240 if his life is on the line, okay? The Nationals offense, like CB said, they were fourth in average last year, sixth in on base, and 10th in OPS. Really, really not that bad compared to what I thought. The pitching was atrocious, which is kind of uh, interesting if you think about it. But I'm not huge on this deal. But CB, you had Josh Bell and Kyle Schwarber playing over uh Brock Holt even though I love him even though I love Brock Holt I'm I'm fully on the bandwagon now you get Josh Bell replacing Brock Holt and then you have Kyle Schwarber bat- hitting over Adam Eaton I mean the top four in our lineup Trey Turner Juan Soto Josh Bell Kyle Schwarber you, you can't really complain about that obviously Schwarber I'm not a huge fan he either strikes out or he hits a ball 500 feet and he strikes out a lot more then he hits the ball 500 feet. 10 million is a lot of money for a one year deal. But hey, I mean, like you said, the defense isn't as bad as I thought when I looked into it more because, you know, that's a big meme, Schwarber and his defense. There's never a bad one year deal. I'm not calling this a bad one year deal, but it's, eh, he's going to have to win me over. If he hits a 500 foot bomb on opening day, I'm going to be happy. But sold. Yeah, I'm going to be sold. But if there's a DH in the NL, that'll help a lot. But Schwarber, I think it definitely adds some pop into the lineup. But you know I'm sad. Andrew Stevenson, man. You know I wanted to see him play that 162, him platoon with a right-handed hitter. We could have saved $6.6 million if we gave Hunter Renfro the exact $3.4 million contract. Oh, wow. You know, it's funny that and you're we, now, you're now, uh, you know, cha- Time Blue you know, made you're, one you're, good move. You're picking it's the numbers. You're looking at the numbers. You're pulling out the calculator, looking at the payroll when no. you were making fun of us for doing listen, that's listen. just. I bet you wish you had Hein Bloom. That's no, all I'm saying. No, no, I don't wish we had that. But you could have used that $6 million and spent it on an Alex Colome. You know, maybe he wants a 12 mil for two years. So a 24 mil, two year contract, something like that. But with our payroll, that 6.6 mil could have been better. You get a Hunter Renfro, Andrew Stevenson. But listen, Schwarber, like I said, we're going to have to win him over. But Hein Bloom, Hein Bloom, speaking of Hein Bloom, the Red Sox, they're trying to ship away Andrew Benatendi. What do you have to say? What You're you heartbroken. To you got to be heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, listen, this I, guy's dealt away. I, I wouldn't trade a bucket of baseballs for this guy. I wouldn't trade no. a bucket of baseballs for this guy. Now he's never Terrible. coming on the pod. So, um, you gonna yeah? Well, you got to say something nice about him if he's gonna come on the pod. I mean, you great just hair. insulted him. Great hair. Great hair. That's and he true. won the college baseball player of the year award, which um, I did not win. So That's you true. got that. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, MLB trade rumors report thrown out there. It might've been Heyman. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, they're saying they're in serious talks serious. to trade him. We'll see. We'll see. 
Uh, the value can't be too high after he hit 103 and then missed like 50 games to close out the season. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's going to be at peak value right now, but Heimblum is a wizard. So maybe he'll pull out a good deal here. Um, but anyone from that 2018 team that moves on the legendary 2018 team, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be sad. Get over it. That was like five years ago, man. Yeah. Get over it. Um, but no, anyone that leaves from there, I'm going to be sad, but he's not traded yet. He's still here. He's still here. Um, and I'm not, I'm not ready to let go of many, not ready. Like we talked about with our boy, Steve Peralt, two-time MoCast alum, the GOAT. What I told him when we were talking about Ben Attendee, the second interview we had with him, I said, get Benny on Bumble. You know, he broke up with the girlfriend. He had a bad season in 2020, terrible, horrendous season. So I said, get Benny on Bumble. So if I'm getting a trade for him, I got to say, Ben Attendee, what's the relationship status right now? If he's in a relationship, you say, okay, that's good. You ask if it's serious or not. If he's in a serious relationship, I'd trade for him. If not, that 2020 number, his heart's broken. He's not on Bumble. I, I'm not taking him. That That's my thoughts on it. No free ads, though. No free ads. No, yeah, no free ads. Good point. Yeah, cut that. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, Tatis, though, Tatis reportedly in talks for an extension. I heard, you know, people throwing around 11 years, $320 million. I personally think that makes sense because – that's a ton of money. He's he's been great so far in his young career. That's 29 mil a year. You know, if it's 11 years, 300, I think that's fair too. So 29 mil a year in 10 years from now, I mean, people are probably going to be getting 40 a year and he'll, if he plays like we think he'll be, you know, a top, a top five, top 10 caliber player. Like we think he can be like he's shown. Um, but you could get that discount in the future, but you're taking on the risk now. I mean, you're taking away the arbitration years. You're just giving him 29 mil then um, if this is the deal, you know what I mean? Something like that. So taking a little bit of risk, but he's also uh, getting some, some security there, signing a $300 million deal when he's 22. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, again, it's all talks. We'll see if it happens, but I'm curious. Yeah, I'm very curious also. Mike Rizzo, I know you are listening. We have a guy who is very young and very good. That's fair to say, Chris, right? He's very young and very good. Guy by the name of Juan Soto. Very young and very good. Decent. He's decent. Do something. Sign Juan Soto. Don't let him leave like that bum, Bryce. Thank goodness we let him go. But Anthony Rendon, imagine if we locked him up early. The Atlanta Braves, Chris, do you remember what they did? I think it was 2018. I'll be Zacuna. They signed Albies and Acuna early. Now they are superstars. Ronald Acuna, he's under an eight-year, a hundred million contract. If he White signed Sox one, too. yeah, 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 they do it with all their players. Phillies, it obviously didn't work out with Scott Kingery. He's one of the worst players in the MLB, but they're a trash organization. If Ronald Acuna signed an extension with the Braves right now, he'd get that eleven-year, three hundred twenty million. Nationals. Do something. Padres, I think it's a smart move. Like you said, it's risky. It is risky, but owners have a lot of money. Lock up your superstar, satisfy your fan base. And yeah, if Tatis keeps doing what he's doing, two, three years, you're going to say he's already earned that 300 million. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's that good. He is that good of a player. You, you want to lock him up early. You look like a genius if it works out, and it stinks if it doesn't. But with a guy like Tatis, unless, obviously, knock on wood, it would be terrible if he had a – I don't even want to say it, if he got injured. But lock him up early. Do the right thing. Mike Rizzo, also do it to Juan Soto. But come on. Do it, Mike Rizzo. Do it. Don't let him leave like Rendon. Just do it. Um, also Chris Bryant, Chris Bryant, they, they were saying, I mean, there was a report this weekend. like he was going to get traded before like kickoff on Saturday for football, I, but nothing ended up happening. Um, you know, I heard the Mets were talking to him, but then I heard they haven't talked in, in weeks and stuff. So it's all over the place, but we'll see, uh, with Chris Bryant, I still think he gets dealt. It's more of a, a when not if in my mind, um, 
Is that, I mean, is that what you're thinking? Or are you thinking maybe he stays? No doubt. He's gone. He's gone. We see that by Schwarber, you Darvish. He's, he's gone. Almora's gone also. I'm more interested to see where Wilson Contreras, Contreras goes because Chris Bryant, I know he's gone. Contreras is a top five catcher in the MLB. Um, Chris Bryant, it's going to be very interesting. Hopefully he can bounce back because he's been bad since 2019 the end of 2019. Um, but yeah, I saw that the Mets haven't talked to him for a while. Mets infields looking pretty good. I mean, you get JD Davis at third, Jed Lowry at second. I mean, Jed Lowry, what am I thinking? Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. I love him. He's the only Mets player. I like who's their second baseman. What's his name again? I cannot believe I'm blanking on this. He's the only Mets player. I like, Oh my gosh, he's been playing a lot of left field. We're we're all good. We're all good. He added like three. Oh, Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil. I mean, I know everything about him. I know he played golf in high school. I didn't even know that, and I forgot his name. Mets infield's looking pretty good. It wouldn't make a ton of sense for them, obviously, if you can get a guy like Chris Bryant when I saw a thing, uh, I saw a tweet sent out the other day. I think it was Heyman. He was saying he's surprised by how little talk there's been with Chris Bryant, how low his value is. So nationals, come on, man, do it. If it, do if it. his value is low, what are we talking for Ben and Tendy? Like, I, <laughs> you know, I, no, Back I mean, 80s, maybe, geez, geez. Um, maybe. Okay. Let, let's talk about this too. Cause this popped up on my phone, read a little bit about it fired Los Angeles Angels clubhouse attendant names pitchers in ball doctor in case let me read you this let me read you this Garrett Cole text did you see this I saw it it was pretty funny hey (laughs) hey Bubba it's Garrett Cole the text reads I was wondering if you could help me out with this sticky situation this is the part that gets me winky face emoji (laughs) We don't see you until May, but we have some road games in April that are cold, that are in cold weather places. The stuff I had last year seizes up when it gets cold. Okay. Two things. One, one, uh, if you're going to do this, like, I don't know, like call, like FaceTime, like something where it can't be screenshotted, like something, you know, take a selfie on Snapchat. Yeah, I agree. Two. Uh, who cares? I mean, they they named Garrett Cole, Max Scherzer. No, not not Scherzer. I didn't see. Yes, that. he did. He did uh-huh. name Scherzer. He did name Scherzer. Uh, Garrett Cole, Verlander, Edwin Jackson, Scherzer, Felix Hernandez, Corey Kluber, uh, a ton of guys. But here's what I'm saying: it doesn't matter. Who cares? People know. Um, unless it's Michael Pineda getting tossed in the middle of the game for having the stuff on his neck, at least hide it a little. I mean, come yeah. on. Um, I mean, from every everything i've heard everything i've heard these these major league hitters are like yeah you can use pine tar because you throw 98 and i want you to have a grip on the ball so you don't hit me and and you know possibly put my life at risk like no one cares it's like batting gloves when you're batting it doesn't affect the pitch it affects your grip like you're exactly right that's a great point you're throwing 98 you want them to have a good grip you don't want to get hit in the face (laughs) I mean, come on. It's, it's one of those stupid things. It's like you, you, you're talking about a law or something in the United States and you're like, that's illegal. Just something like jaywalking, like that. jaywalking, We're, hypothetically. And I'd say, I don't jaywalk. No, I, I don't I, jaywalk. hypothetically. No, no, but yeah, exactly. Right. It's just something like that. And you're like, really, if you get, if I, if I walk up to my sister right now, not a bit, she's not huge into baseball, knows a couple players say, Hey, Olivia, you know, it's illegal to get a better grip on a baseball. Like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. dumb. It's dumb. Yeah. That, that, that was a bad way to put it, but it's just dumb. It's just dumb. But yeah, it's, it's funny. That text was very funny. Like, but yeah, like I said, Garrett Cole, get Snapchat right now. Send a winky selfie, face get the lettuce. I mean, Garrett Cole, I would have liked, yeah. I mean, the winky face selfie. He could have done the selfie with the wink. Ah, creepy. Garrett Cole, you're <laughs> sus. You're sus. Uh, you had a bad year last year. You disappointed my Yankees. You really did. Yeah. But, um, yeah, a lot of news. A lot of news. But 
Final Last thing, one, final so. thing. I just want to bring this up. Rest in peace, Tommy Lasorda. Uh, passed away. Uh, huge, huge name in baseball. Uh, did a ton for the game. So, um, yeah, just, just very bad news there. But uh, he has a very good legacy for uh, the game of baseball. But he went out on top. Hate the Dodgers. Oh, don't hate. I only hate three Whoa. things in this world. What are the three things I hate, CB? Mets and kind of Phillies. Yeah. Uh, cucumbers, pickles. Well, cucumbers, pickles is two. What's oh, cucumbers third? and pickles. Oh, shoot. What's the third? Give me a hint. What am I reading right now? What do I have to read? Oh, Shakespeare. 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 Terrible. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. I knew that. I knew yeah. that. I knew that. Yeah. Thank you. Those are the, yeah. yeah. I very dislike the Dodgers. They stink. I hate them. I, what am I? <laughs> they stink. The The Los Angeles Dodgers stink. You're a big market team. You haven't won a World Series in like 35 years. Congrats. But you did win when Tommy Lasorda came, uh, went out. Rest in peace. Legend, like you said, like you put it. Great way to put it. Yeah. Um, okay, segments. Segments. Who's hot? Who's not? LA. What do you got? First one, who's hot? Do rag Larry. If you guys were on my McLean House basketball team or know anything about it, do la- do rag Larry. You know, you guys know I wore the do rag, took it off when we when we lost a couple games. It was a bad omen, but I had a do rag on, and then I'd give out a do rag of the game. I had two do rags. Whoever had the best game would wear the do rag for the next game. But when we started losing, I stopped doing it. But do rag Larry, I'm hot. Okay. Like I said, I'm a house basketball all-star, house basketball champion. I'm I'm a two-league all-star, by the way. McLean House all-star and Vienna all-star. I'm a Vienna champion. McLean House, I'm never going to talk about it ever, how sad losing that in the playoffs was. Wow, I'm never going to get over that. But I'm also a coach of the year. I don't know if I, I told you about that. I had that no. on LinkedIn. I'm a coach of the year. What, what grade? It was uh, when I was a senior. So there were 22 teams. So I, I was, we were allowed to coach our own teams in McLean House. Oh. Yeah. So it, there were 22 teams, and I was, I was the coach of the year. I got a nice plaque. I think it. You got voted coach of the year? Yeah, I got voted coach of wow. the year. Wow. Got voted wow, coach. That's huge. Year. Yeah. Thank Should you. Should put that in the intro. Yeah. But we lost in the playoffs. So uh, maybe not then. Yeah. Uh, but I've been playing pickup basketball as of late. Like I told you, I stunk the first day lights out in day two. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm feeling good in the basketball. I haven't played in forever lights out in day two. I used to dominate in basketball cause I was bigger than everybody. And I just, I was, I'm great in the post, but my developing guard skills has been tough. Um, but I'm hot. I've been wearing a gator playing outside and it's good. I like wearing the gator mask because it covers my ears. My ears get mm, very cold yeah. and it's been very cold at not away, but I'm hot. Um, I don't like tooting my own horn, but been hitting some three Humble King. I'm feeling good. Humble King. It's been a tough grind, but I'm, I'm hot. I'm hot. Second Fo- day, not the first day football, not basketball, but NFL coaches, you should just keep the mask because they always hold up the play sheet in front of their faces. You don't have to do that anymore. If you got the mask on, like you said, covers your ears. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, But yeah, yeah, you're, uh, you're killing it. I wish we had some stats. Of course you, the thing you talked about uh, is kind of, I mean, not your fault. It's, it's just the, the, you know, genetics maybe, I guess, but yeah, they always talk about um, like Anthony Davis. He's so good because he was smaller, so he yeah. used to play guard, yeah. and then he grew a bunch. But he had all these guard skills, and then he was like six eight, six nine. Yeah, yeah so, opposite for me. Yeah, opposite. you had the opposite. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. Um, okay, my who's hot is Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon Bear Saints was on Nickelodeon. I was talking to my dad about it. He was like, which which is the Nickelodeon game? Cause we got to get that on the TV. Um, but yeah, SpongeBob, they had the little intro with it. Everyone is making these memes on Twitter. They're like, mm-hmm. if Nickelodeon did baseball, if Nickelodeon did so-and-so like, this is, this is Nickelodeon explaining so-and-so to the, the people, the audience, and they put in SpongeBob clips. I think genius marketing by them, this whole thing, because it got a ton of press, ton of news, uh, they killed it. The slime was a huge hit. 
I love the slime. You like the slime? Love it. Love it. John, love it. I mean, Sean Payton got slimed. Mm -hmm. um, it was slime everywhere. They did have the accidental slimage on the touchdown that got reversed, but it's it's okay. Extra Two slime is fine. Yeah. And the Drew Brees one, too. Yeah. I mean, who, who's going to complain about extra slime? And Mitch Trubisky won the MVP. So Nickelodeon's on fire. They are, they're like the sun. They're blazing hot. Mm -hmm. Good call. It was great. At first, I really didn't like it, but it grew on me. It did. It did grow on me. And yeah, it was genius for Nickelodeon. It couldn't, couldn't have gone better for them. My who's not of the week refs. Like I say, I don't complain. I don't like complaining, but I hate to say it. The NFL is rigged. I mean, some of these calls that were made over the playoffs, it was unbelievable. It may be a little biased me talking about it because my team lost the team and I'm listening to a Tim Donahue documentary podcast type of thing. You know, of course, you know who he is, the, the NBA rep who was bet, yep. betting on his own games. There were so many questionable calls. I'll name a few of them. I'll name a few of them. The Colts receiver at the end of the game, that was a fumble, but uh, they just wanted to see what old man Rivers could do. There were two or three holding calls against Washington that were not called. There was a hands to the face, a picture that went viral. There was a non-pass interference against Washington. And then um, Drew Brees threw an interception in that game. E. Noon claimed it wasn't an interception. Even but, I thought it was an interception. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I mean, I don't know how they didn't call that an inter interception. And like you said, why do they even replay some of these plays? They're not reversing it. They're not reversing most of these calls. And who's uh, telling the coaches on some of them too? Yeah. It's like, it's, I mean, there was the meme of Belichick throwing the phone because yeah. he challenged something. I mean, there's someone in your ear that's saying, hey, challenge this. And it wasn't even close. This was a couple of weeks ago, but in the Colts game, they, they didn't win a single, they won one challenge. I thought maybe the whole game, but they had a billion that were reviewed. I, I'm with you. I mean, yeah. this is, I mean, when, words when out of my mouth. When there's a super, super wild card weekend, you don't want to be talking about the refs. That's why they're not hot. No. I mean, just having to talk about them. Not at all. Um, one thing, interesting thing I did learn. One, um, shout out Ron Torbert. Shout out Ron Torbert. He didn't have a game this weekend, but um, shout out Ron Torbert. Second thing, I learned this uh, like a couple of years ago, and it kind of blew my mind. When they replay, uh, when they do a replay, they come out and they say the ruling on the field stands or they say confirmed stands is we didn't have enough evidence to overturn it. So we're sticking with the call confirmed means that we did see enough evidence to confirm that we were correct the first time. Mm. So it's just weird. I learned that a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to pass it on anyone listening that might not know. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, learn something mind. every day. Uh, my who's not is the Houston Texans. Ugh, ugh, Houston Texans, gross. Um, they lied to Deshaun Watson, sent out a tweet about it because it, it it was ridiculous. He, I guess, advocated or requested that they interview Eric Bieniemy, who is the Chiefs' offensive coordinator the past two years. Um, maybe longer than that, but at least the past two years when, you know, they've had one of the best offenses in the history of the league and the Texans don't even interview Eric Bieniemy. which even if Deshaun Watson doesn't ask you to interview him, you should probably do that because it's like, it's him. It's Robert Sala. Like I, those are probably, those guys are probably the top two candidates in the entire league. And you're not interviewing one of them. Um, give me a break. And then they also, they paid a search, uh, like a research firm to help them find a GM. And then they suggested uh, somebody on the Steelers and the Texans ignored it and hired someone else. So yeah. it's a mess. It's a mess. And now Deshaun Watson wants out apparently. So, yeah. They're a mess. Their cap is a mess. They don't have any draft picks and they stink. So it's tough. It's tough, but our shout out of the week, kick it off, CB. All right, Bianca Smith, the Red Sox didn't even didn't even, you know, do this cuz of the Red Sox. It's just great news. Uh Bianca Smith hired by the Red Sox to be a minor league coach. 
becomes the first black woman to coach in professional baseball. Uh, so she was a director of baseball operations at Case Western Reserve University. Uh, and then she's also worked with the Reds and the Rangers. So awesome stuff, making history. Uh, love to see it. Love to see it. Shout out to Bianca Smith. That is uh, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. My good buddy, O'Kelly McWilliams, freshman All-American at Wofford. Huge, 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 huge Yankees fan. He tweeted out, he retweeted the Bianca Smith thing, and he said, I'm, I can't believe I'm – he said, I'm never going to live this down, but it's beyond worth it. Go Red Sox. Yeah, O'Kelly, man. if you're Shout listening. Shout out Ivy. I, I'm, uh, I'm screenshotting that tweet. I'm screenshotting that tweet, but no, Bianca <laughs> Smith, awesome stuff there. My shout out of the week, who else could it be other than Taylor Heineke? We talked about it a ton with our boy Noah Beach when we get to the Washington football section of the MoCast a little bit later on, but a little preliminary info. Like I told Noah, I've been saying for weeks he should be the starter. He balled out. Shout out to my cousin, my cousin. Christopher Natania in Florida. Hope you're listening. Before the game, my cousin, this was before the game, before Twitter exploded. He tweeted, Taylor Heineke is going to make a lot of fans tonight, but don't get it twisted, kids. Not a one-hit wonder. He's been a baller since college, just needed an opportunity. He tweeted that before the game. Shout out, Christopher. That was awesome. Shout out, Taylor Heineke. He looked poised. He's mobile. Good arm. Didn't make a bad decision, made one bad throw, that's it. And he outplayed Tom Brady, like we're going to talk about. But I may need that photo of him diving for the pylon framed. I, re I really Ooh, might need that photo. I, I almost, uh, you know, the thing with like like the Pope and he's holding up YouTube people, you see, like he's holding up yeah. something. I almost tweeted that out with the picture of him diving for yeah. the pylon, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Would have been pretty um, good yeah that was awesome he he made that game a blast to watch when it kind of going into it i was like this might stink yeah everybody objectively and then it, it was it was awesome it came down to the wire so yeah yeah uh great call but uh, a little preview there nfl wild card super super wild card weekend super wild card weekend whoa almost slipped up there um, let's kick it off six games. We're going to do Washington football team game against the Buccaneers. We're going to do that last because like, uh, like we talked about, we got Noah beach on to talk about that outnumbered me with the Washington fans, whatever, but that was awesome. Um, so we'll do that last, but let's kick it off. Colts bills, Colts bills. What'd you think? Vegas knows. That's what I think. Vegas knows. They're just so much smarter than everybody else. Bills minus six, minus six and a half was a lock, and they won by three points. I was shocked that the Colts stayed in it. The first half, Chris, the Colts just outplayed the Bills like crazy, and the Bills were winning by four. Um, but this game, you know, my biggest takeaway from this is Bills win their first playoff game in, what, like 25 years and every time I watch Josh Allen make one of those plays that he always makes, this guy's unbelievable. Just wow, Josh Allen. And old man Rivers, you know, been bashing you on the pod all year long, been bashing you on good griefs. Tip of my hat. I'm tipping my hat, old man Rivers. You played well. Um, the dink and dunks, you know, that that's your game now. I'm surprised he got it to the end zone almost on that Hail Mary. Yeah, I was but, like, this is bad. Yeah, this is bad when they lined up for it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he wasn't – I mean, this 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 68% uh, completion. I, I know you said it, it was the dink and dunk, and it was. Um, but, yeah, he, he wasn't terrible. I'm curious to see if he comes back. Um, we'll find out. But um, June, I'm sorry, Maddie, uh, my sister, she, she knows what I'm talking about. It's okay. June, I'm sorry for the Bills minus six. That was tough. Um, I really, everybody, like you said, was on it. Everybody was 90 on it. 90 percent of the money. Oh, we should have known. We should have mm -hmm. known. Um, but, yeah, my, my takeaway was the Bills, uh, first of all, that was definitely a fumble, like you already talked about on that last drive. 
Second thing, the Bills, I thought they would look better. The, the whole 10 or more points stat was thrown around uh, billions of times over this past week. And yeah, they won the game, but the whole the whole chatter, the whole discussion was, hey, if anyone can beat the Chiefs, it's uh, it's this Bills team. This Bills team can beat the Chiefs. And then I think after the game, maybe it was Ethan, Ethan Noon, maybe it was Ian. I, I don't know. Someone said in our group chat, they said, this team's not beating the Chiefs. I mean, we'll see. But I, Bills Mafia, they won. You got the sweatshirt on. Um, so it was great. Can't complain about a win in the playoffs. But uh, I don't know. I thought it would be a little more convincing. That's all. Yeah, th- that's a good takeaway. I-, I agree with that. I thought it would be more convincing as well. The Colts aren't as bad as I've said and a lot of people say. But you're right. It should have been more convincing. Josh Allen, superstar. Him and Gabriel Stephon. Davis, too. I mean, this Ooh. this guy on the sidelines, he, he gets the tiptoes in there. He's fantastic. Yeah. And also, shout out Mo Alley Cox, the uh, the – the Colts tight ends, they they went off. Jack Doyle and Mo Alley Cox, they combined for eleven catches for a hundred and two yards and a touchdown. Quick math. I'm gearing up for school. Gearing up for school. But Mo Alley Cox two years ago was a basketball player at VCU. Hadn't played football since freshman year of high school. Now he's catching passes in a playoff game for the Colts as their tight end. Are you kidding me? What an athlete. But I'm worried about the tight ends just tearing up the bills because I think uh, if they face the Chiefs, I think they have a pretty good tight end. He's, he's pretty okay. He's end. pretty good. He's yeah. pretty, pretty good. Every tight end played uh, basketball in high school. I yeah. every every tight end. Yeah. Um, I swear, played basketball in high school. He he I broke. Think, e Noon said he broke like block records at VCU. He was that good at basketball in college. Crazy. Uh, Blake Jarwin, I'm pretty sure on the Cowboys. They always mention that always on the broadcast they say like Blake Jarwin uh played basketball in high school Chris Hogan played uh lacrosse in college and did you know Patrick... Thomas was a quarterback he no. was drafted as a quarterback did you, you know want that? me to blow your mind you want yeah. me to blow your mind what? Patrick Mahomes his dad played baseball whoa I didn't yeah. know that either wow. yes yeah, his, his dad played baseball. oh oh I got one more for you you know Julian yeah. Edelman yeah you know what he did yeah, he's he a wide receiver. Steroids. He took steroids. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I thought you were he gonna fell say right into the trap. I thought you were gonna say he was a wide receiver in, or a quarterback in college. Yeah, but no, he that took was steroids. But he also was a quarterback in college. You're right. Moving on. Um, that was good. That was good. Thank Rams, you. Seahawks. The Rams win this game. John Wolford. Gets the win, but he got hurt, um, went to the hospital. So I hope he's doing all right. Um, and then Goff came in, but Goff was also hurt because his thumb, he had pins in his thumb because he got surgery like a week and a half ago. So this was a mess. And uh, and the Seahawks, uh, yeah, they lost with all that going on. There were six playoff games this weekend. This is the only game I got right on Mo Money. The Washington game pushed, so I guess I was one – four and one not good but we're gonna get into more money you'll hear that but vegas isn't gonna outsmart me two weeks in a row i see what they're doing now by the time the browns game i'll, I'll save it for more money but by the time the browns played the steelers i wish i could have flipped my pick you but, were on it i you did text thank you yeah. i was all in on the browns thank you I, I wish i could have flipped the pick there but yeah that was crazy by the way did you see that picture of wofford going to the hospital in the ambulance I did because it's in our document and I looked it up. Yeah, I feel like they they just did him dirty, man. What a bad picture. I mean, I, I don't, don't know. Don't take pictures of people in an ambulance. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel what? like they were doing him dirty. Like, remember when Adam Schefter posted uh, JPP's hand when it got blown up and everybody was did killing he? him? Ugh. Yeah, everybody was killing him for it. Um, Darren Ravel like- tweeted, the, like, the the jfk assassination like well what what are we doing guys yeah. like that's just yeah it was it was a bad picture but that was yeah that was that was scary because it didn't look like a huge hit but jamal adams you can roast and make fun of him all you want he hits hard when he makes contact mm-hmm. and a shoulder straight to the to the dome jammed his neck up but i think he's okay but 
Jared Goff, that, that was crazy. Like you said, with his thumb, you could tell he wasn't close to 100%. The Seahawks lost to the Rams by 10 points at home with Jared Goff with every, like, four or five passes just looked like, I don't just sorcery because he couldn't grip a ball. You could see he was doing thumb stretches, and the Seahawks lost by 10 points. I told you I didn't think this team was that good. It, it was a weird, bad game. Yeah, it was just strange. I don't like the Rams anymore. I don't like watching them. Um, I, I, I'm I'm sorry about it, especially because they won't be playing at home anymore, so we don't get the stadium either. Like you know, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, Russell Wilson threw a pick six on a screen. Takeaway number one: what that that's impossible. Doesn't even like. I don't think you can do that in Madden if you try. It can't happen. Um. And they also just the Seahawks offense. It just, it's just kind of fell off halfway through the season and they never really got back. It was a little bit, uh, I was thinking like with the Buccaneers where you're like, okay, they'll turn it on and they have the Bucs, but the Seahawks, I was like, okay, they'll turn it on. Russell Wilson. I love Chris Carson. Uh, it's DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Like that they'll be good. They'll turn it on in the playoffs. And I know it's a great Rams defense, but they just didn't. And it, it, it kind of disappointed me. You know, I love DK Metcalf. You know, I think he's a monster. How can you not love him? He, he's unbelievable. I wanted Washington to, to draft him so bad a couple years ago, but we got Montez Sweat. I mean, he's obviously not getting the media attention that DK does, but Sweat's a stud. DK, yeah, he had 96 yards, two TDs. I hate to say this. I do saying the word hate a lot. I dislike to say this. Let's relax with the DK Metcalf, Calvin yeah. Johnson comparisons. I hate, I don't like to say it. Um, he's a superstar, but until I see DK getting double, triple teamed and still making catches, still having a hundred yards, three TDs, Jalen, Jalen Ramsey shut him down. He shut him down. I saw some stats that in four games, when, when Ramsey's slotted on DK, he has like three catches for 32 yards, something like that. Let's relax on the comparisons. But Seahawks, they got to look in the mirror. They're getting older. Their, their defense obviously stinks. Um, weird game. Well, weird game. And I don't think that, the Rams are good, like you said. No, I don't trust the Rams one bit. Not one bit. Um, yeah, the weird thing was – the Seahawks defense stunk and then it got better at the end of the year when their offense started to stink. So yeah. it was just kind of torture for Seahawks fans. Like, can yeah. we put it together? And they didn't. The thought, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. The thought came into my head. And I'm not saying this. Mm-hmm. The thought entered my brain. AJ Brown's better than DK Metcalf. AJ Brown's so good. Uh, but yeah, I, we so can talk good. about it with the Titans game, but it's, I, I didn't say it. The thought came yeah. into my head. That's all. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not saying it either, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I don't want DK to hear this and come to my house. No. That's why I'm not talking about it more. I'm really trying to get DK on the pod. I, I, that would um, be crazy. That would be I, crazy. I, 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 I I want to uh, have a bench off with him also. Yeah. I think 50, maybe 50. You either give me a couple months. I, I could maybe bench as much. Either as you'll can. win or he'll win 50, 50 chance statistics, uh, statistics major. Um, there that's you good. Go. Anyone listening for jobs. So it's, it's, it's not, it's, there's, mm-hmm. there's no chance. Um, okay. Titans, Ravens, Mike Rabel uh, punted. That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. It was, let me find the tweet while, um, while you soak in, in the sorrows of your Titans. I had the Titans plus three. You know, I had the Titans plus three on Mo Money and Good Griefs picks. I had Titans money line on Good Griefs picks. They jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead. I was feeling great. I knew the Ravens would take this game. I hate to say it, but they are hot. They are hot. They are hot. They are hot. And nobody wants to play the Ravens right now. Nobody wants to play them. But they never got the King Derrick Henry going. They they got A.J. Brown going. Ryan Tannehill threw a great pass, but there was an interception. Nothing you can say. The Ravens are are white hot. They're not even red hot. They're white hot. And, you know, 
I really think that they can, uh, the Ravens, they're, they're tough. They play the bills next week. We're going to preview that in a minute, but the Ravens are very good. Okay. Tennessee. Here's a tweet from surrender index 90. The people that do the, the punt surrender index. So the Titans punting on fourth and two with 10 minutes and six seconds left in the fourth quarter. Well, they were losing by four points. They were on the Baltimore 40. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Baltimore 40, a surrender index of 138.87. This punt ranks in the 100th percentile of cowardly punts of the 2020 season. And the 99.92 percentile of all punts since 2009. That's how bad that punt was from a a, a cowardly perspective. I love Mike Vrabel, former Patriots guy. He's not a coward, but the move, I mean, come on, that, that was bad. Was, it was, especially looking back on it. It was a tough move. I mean, the Ravens, they just had six guys on the line. They shut down Derrick Henry. Ryan Tannehill did pretty well in the play action. But what are you going to do? Like I said, this team is quite hot. You're not getting off that easy. You are not getting off that easy. They they shut him down. Derrick Henry, 18 carries, 40 yards, 2.2 yards per attempt is the most dominant player in NFL history. That's what you told me. That's what you told me, and he was the. Uh, I mean, come on, what what happened? Yeah, it, it was tough. Um, you, I know you like to call Tom Brady the goat. I remember last season, the Patriots were twelve and four. They played a nine and seven Titans team. That's you true. call Tom Brady the goat, right? Yeah. Um, I think Derrick Henry's the goat, the most dominant offensive player of all time. Tom Brady versus the Tennessee Titans last year, 20 for 37, 209 yards and a pick six, mm. 209 yards and a pick six, 40 QBR, four zero QBR. Okay. But, you know, Derrick Henry having one bad game when they have six, eight people on the line at a time, just baiting them to throw the football you're going to bash him for that, but Tom Brady losing against a well, yeah. nine and seven Tennessee Titans team at home last season. You don't care. You you think hundred percent, hundred percent ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's spot on. Um, but yeah, that was tough. Can we do the AJ Brown uh, conversation now? Yeah. Yeah. Let, okay. Let's he, he's so good, man. Remember, so good. remember I was killing him for, he dropped a couple passes in that one. He, two, three, Ryan seven, Tannehill seven. overthrew AJ Brown once in LA dubbed him the, the worst player of all time. I mean, you, I'm pretty sure you said he had bricks for hands. I'm I, I did. Sure. I, I did say that that's a quote, but no, he he's, he's unbelievable. And it's just crazy. DK Metcalf and AJ Brown were on the same team in college. How nuts is that? And they stunk. Yeah. And they stunk at football. Mississippi. Yeah. They stunk. Six Ole receptions, Miss. 83 yards, and a touchdown, uh, including might have been pass interference uh, on that touchdown, but whatever. He, nah. He's fit. He's awesome. It's he pushed bias, off, I thought. Bias aside, I really think that was a good no call. Seriously. I, I would, you know, I'd make a joke or something. I, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It says, um, I watched this whole game. It said Ryan Tannehill. I'm looking at the stats right now. One catch for negative 10 yards. Oh, yeah. oh, that, yeah. that was, yeah, that was when he threw the pass. That, that it. That, that saved, crazy. well, that didn't save. That, it was at that moment that I thought tied at halftime might work. I thought tight at halftime might work because that kept the clock ticking and that was 20 seconds off the clock. And I said, okay, okay. The ball's literally bouncing my way. Yeah. And tied at halftime for those who don't know, we'll probably talk, uh, you know, 55, 60 minutes about it on Mo Money because tied at halftime is the new phenomenon. I'm obsessed with tied at halftime. It worked. um, and, And it's fantastic. Real Crazy. quick, I want to talk about the Ravens. You covered it, but they're phenomenal. No one wants to play the Ravens, Nobody. especially not the Bills. Especially not the Bills. 
Uh, you want to guess the line real quick because I just pulled up the line for next week. Minus three and a half, Bills. Minus three. Do you know? Is that your guess? Yeah, that's my guess. Okay, let's see. Ooh, two and a half. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. We're going to get into it in a minute, but I'm scared. I'm scared. Mm. I really am. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Lamar got his first playoff win. So, yeah. After he threw that pick, I sent in the chat. I said, playoff Lamar has entered the chat. It was so, bad. once again, once again, I have fixed Lamar Jackson for the <laughs> second time, third time. So, you're welcome him again. That was a terrible interception, though. But The QB whisper, L.A. Rice. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> middle, school, middle school QB. Middle school QB. Flag football QB. Exactly. Um, okay, Bears, Saints. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This was never really in, in doubt. It was never really close. Uh, sorry, Bears fans. But this was – as soon as the Saints got – a lead i was like all right it's that was fun that was cool it's over this game stunk it did it was not a fun playoff game to watch uh of course i watched it there were some good moments it being on nickelodeon was great um but yeah this was it was a weird game because for some part of it you really thought the bears were in it but did you see that play where mitch trubisky did he forget that was fourth down what was that just like ran out of bounds when they went yeah. for it. It was like fourth and four. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, wild maneuver. Mitch Mitch did throw a dime though, and it, oh, you know, it was and they dropped. dropped it. Oh, he had he must he had slime on his hands. Maybe I, <laughs> the ball had slime on it. Yep. Good one. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, that, that was tough. Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Mm -hmm. Good game. No turnovers. Should Unlike Taysom, one, yeah. who had a funny fumble uh, when the ball just popped 50 feet into the air. so you know. he, he was lined up. The pocket collapsed on him. They have a bad O-line. The pocket collapsed oh. on him. He had a receiver oh. deep. He stepped up in the pocket. He did what he should have, and the ball slipped. You know, the, the offensive line, they blew their coverage. Slime on the ball. Slime on the ball. It, it's not Taysom's fault. But I I I I... I really want to see Mitch in a Bears uniform next year. Yeah. Me I mean, too. Bears, you got to, man. It, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do. But wasn't Michael Mitch's Thomas. Fault. Sorry, go, go on. Just wasn't Mitch's fault. Kind of feel bad for him. Yeah. 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 I don't think it'll happen, but I want it. I want him in the Bears uniform, undoubtedly. Uh, Michael Thomas also, I kind of forgot he was on this team. Yeah. Because he's played like, two games all season and they were with Taysom. So I was watching Taysom and not Michael Thomas. Um, also Cole Komet is nice. I'm, I fell in love with Cole Komet. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. Uh, and then Jimmy Graham possibly with the greatest catch ever to end a career. Yeah. He has to retire after that. I think he signed a two or three year deal with the bears, but you make that catch, you run off the field. How legendary would that be? If he uh, if he retired, you're washed, Jimmy. You you had a better year than I thought you would this year, but yeah, Cole Komet's a stud. Did you see that one penalty? That was terrible. They, uh, they, they called like an unsportsmanlike conduct because he threw the ball at the ref. Oh yeah, yeah. What was that? Yeah, that was by strange. the by the way, Cole Komet, he grew up in Chicago. I'm pretty sure, or at least he went to high school there. Um, my buddy who lived in Chicago, he moved to Virginia, he went to my school. One of the best house basketball players I've ever seen other than myself, Kevin Kuykendall. Hope you're listening. Yeah, he grew up in Illinois. Um, he played baseball and football Where? in high school. He, he grew up Arlington Heights, Illinois. And what, Ar what state? Illinois. Okay. Illinois. Okay. All right. Illinois. He played football and baseball in Illinois. He, my buddy, Kevin Kuykendall, he said that Cole Komet hit a, like a 650 foot grand slam off of him in high school. <laughs> oh, geez. But yeah, Cole Komet's a stud. He's a stud. So that's pretty cool to say you're watching the game and you remember that, that grand slam that he hit off you. That's pretty cool. 
Andy's a Bears yeah. fan. My buddy's a Bears fan. So uh, no shame in that whatsoever mm-hmm. um, at all, of course. Um, okay. Browns, Steelers. This was very funny because uh, I don't like the Steelers and I don't like Big Ben and he stunk and they stunk and this was not, they lost by 11 points. This was a, this was a 20, this should have been a 24 point loss. That's how it felt. At least this was hilarious uh, way for the Steelers season to end. And I feel no, uh, no pity for them at all. Even though you bet Steelers minus four, we all took it. Yeah. That stung a little bit. Well, it was the E noon mortal lock curse. Yeah. Oh, what are we doing? Why I know. He, he was the mortal? Lock? We even said it. We should have switched it then. As soon. Oh. Look, he's not on right now. So this is, oh. I don't know if this is a, a, a scummy move for me. Is when he gives his mortal lock, um, I'm adding the opposite to my car. Yeah. Yeah. This, this week. Man, we should have done that. But, Listen, the Browns jumped out 28 point lead. The Steelers, the rest of the game, it was 37 20. I, I think I read this stat correctly 28 nothing first quarter. It was the most points ever scored by one team in the first quarter in the playoffs wow. ever. Um, but like I said with the Browns, Mayfield, Baker, I can't hate on him after this game. He played well. But you're going to win every single football game when your two stud running backs combined for like, it was a little over 200 yards, like 205 yards, something like that, 204 yards. They combined for a total scrimmage yards, 204 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, you're going to win every single game. Every single game. You you do that quick math? No, no. I, I, I think I saw that stat somewhere, but... I'll, while you're talking, I'll, I'll do some mental math and then I'll check it with a calculator and, and see how I did. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, they're fantastic. Uh, the, the running backs, they use Cleveland with, with Chubb and Hunt. I mean, it's like, it's like they're running a 1960s offense. They just run the ball so much, but it's unstoppable. Um, and I'm very curious for their game next week. Like, like you said, we'll preview that um, after this. But twenty-eight nothing in the first quarter is hilarious. I can't mm-hmm. stop saying it. That was the first snap of the game going into the end zone. By the way, Big Ben definitely could have fallen on that. Oh yeah, no and doubt. everyone clowns Cam. I know like it's a Cam, Super Bowl. Yeah. This is this wasn't the Super Bowl like that, but still, get, clown this guy a little more. I mean, come on, he could have fallen on it, and he didn't um so yeah yeah this was uh what a i I wanted i was gonna tweet it but i thought this this is better with more context what is worse the steelers season long collapse okay so the steelers 11 and 0 and then going ending 12 and 4 right Mm -hmm. 12 and 4 and then losing in the first round of the playoffs or the Falcons Super Bowl collapse, not taking out the fact that it's a Super Bowl. So just that game collapse or the season collapse, kind of similar. Yeah. In my head. Yeah. Both, both were really, really bad, but yeah. I mean, one other thing with this game, like I told you, we, we, we usually plan during halftime of the final game. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. This game was so dominant by the Browns. I Old man, Larry. Old man, Larry, I literally (laughs) fell asleep. It's crazy. The Steelers almost came back. It was 35 to 23, right? When the fourth quarter started fourth and one on the 48 on the 48 and they punted it. If the Steelers got the first down, let's say they scored 35 to 30. It's crazy. The game could have been that close, but that was terrible. I I know you hate big Ben and rightfully so, um, but we'll see what his future holds. It'll be interesting to see. He might he's, retire, he's, man. He's got to be done. He's he he didn't have done. that bad of a year. Really, he didn't. Yeah, but he he was like what we said with Rivers. I mean, he barely threw it deep. I Yeah, but he's been saying for five years, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what he says, I won't believe it until the season starts. And then, yeah. then we'll find out. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so last game that we're going to talk about, Bucks football team with Noah Beach. So we'll do that right now. Um, yeah. Sunday, Saturday night football. Saturday night football. The football team. I want to hear it one more time, CB, because it's going to be the last time we hear it for a while. Do, do your little thing. Do what you call us. What, football team, football club, football organization. Yeah, do it. Hit us with it. Your your Washington football team, football club, organization, squadron has lost. I mean, is that what you wanted? I, I wanted to hear the football team, football club, football, football team, football club, football organization, football squad um, is no more. Well, they will be next year, actually. But. Yeah, they will be in 2021. But I am so, so happy they were defeated 20, 31 to 23. OK, 31 to 23. No big deal. We played great. We played great. But I am so happy. Chris, I don't want him to kill me on this game, okay? And I can take it. I think I'm a tough guy, but I am so, so happy. Our boy Noah Beach is on. Big Washington fan. Big Washington fan. Noah Beach, before we start, I want to hear your best. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Hi Nikki. Nikki. Hey, I... Beach. I would, I would have died for that man on the field yet. Oh, Saturday thank night. you. I yeah, would've... kick it off. What did you think of him, man? That was crazy. I mean, so it was unbelievable. I think it was the best QB play we had all season. It could have been the last. I mean, I don't want to take it, like, obviously one game. So, like, you can't compare what Alex Smith did and what, what we saw from the rest of the QBs. But, like, one game performance, I mean, that's one of the best – games i've seen in a long long time as a skins fan but it'll be interesting to see what we do in the offseason i think we'd be stupid not to keep him but i don't know man i was an electric performance from him watching him literally duck scramble i mean literally he was just dodging sacks like it was nobody's business back there it was it was fun to see fun to watch it was unbelievable unbelievable in my eyes i think i saw something today it was the Highest graded quarterback game since 2004 from a I think Washington it was like, yeah, like the last 15 years or something like that. It was, a I mean, set. how do you play that well in your first game? It's interesting because he is going to be a free agent. CB, listen, I know what you have against our team, the team. I know what you have against them. I know you're an Alex Smith guy. How can't you be after what he did? But you know, I've been saying I want this guy to play four weeks. You know, I've been saying, I wish I can pull it up. I tried looking back on all the MoCast footage, but you said, what have we done? Three days of recording in total, right? The hours, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I added it up, the minutes. You added up the minutes. We've done like three days of recording. I swear, I said, I want this guy to start CB Heineke, man. He, you can't I, tell me listen, with a straight face listen, listen. that he, that he did not outplay Tom Brady. You, you want the truth? The I'll give you the truth. Okay, one, he didn't outplay Tom Brady. There's he that. He had a higher two, grade. Two, oh, I agreed, higher schmade. Two, this might be the most I've ever rooted for the Washington football team in a game. Yeah. I mean, it was electric. I'm not going to lie. Um, of, you know, Alex Smith, uh, pretty good guy to root for this season, especially – um, but I mean, Heineke, he, he was, he was, he was all over the place. I was, I fell in love right when that run happened, when he did the little duck, he didn't even need to score, but he did the duck and I was sold. I was in on him. And then he had the touch pass in the corner. It was beautiful. I'm not going to lie. There's all my nice stuff. Uh, my mean stuff is Tom Brady ended your season. That's pretty funny. You see what I have to deal with every week? No, this is ridiculous. Wait, so let me just – I'm going to try to put the clues together. I see you're Thank wearing you. a Boston Celtics hat, so I'm going to assume you're a New England guy. Let me just take a shot in the yeah. dark. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what does it feel like for you watching Tom Brady play in the playoffs, not on your team? Not you on guys my are team. Um, I, I would definitely prefer him to be on my team, I'll tell you that. Uh, however – However, I still get the joy. I'm not bitter about him leaving. I wish he stayed, of course, but I mean, I was born in 2001. I, I, I've, I can't complain about anything my team does for the rest of my life. So if Tom Brady left, he left. Of course, I wish he stayed, but uh, I, I'm, I'm still hoping he wins. I'm not by any means a Bucks fan, but if he's playing, uh, I'll probably root for him unless it can in some way affect the Patriots. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. I think it's hilarious that Tom Brady would leave the New England Patriots for a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chris, spin zone. Me, spin zone. Are you spin kidding zone. me? How's it not- feel that he went to Tampa Bay? You now, I mean, Joe I mean, Montana a, a lot of a lot of like a lot of old people go to Buccaneers. Florida. It's okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, spin zone. Patriots have a better record than Washington football team this season. Now seven and ten versus seven and nine. I'm just saying. We just played saying, in one math. of the most competitive divisions in NFL history. The you can't. Fi- yeah, you can't debate that. You can't debate can't. it. The final. We were the only division that went into the final game. Other than the Colts Titans, I mean, they were both pretty good. They both are eliminated too. So we went into the final game with three different, or yeah, we went into the final Sunday with three different teams that could have been going to the playoffs. Three different teams could have been going to the playoffs and you're knocking the NFC beast. I don't get it, man. It's just, it's just sad. It's just a worn out joke now. All right. But, but no, this uh, question for you, because I know LA's take on this. Yeah. It was okay. All jokes aside, I'm just, I'm taking my bias my bias hat off. You can YouTube people. I just took the hat off. Washington football team didn't think they were going to be good. They still weren't great. They won the division. They went seven and nine. Season's over. For you, for you, what would you grade this season in terms of your expectations and what ended up happening? Throw in the Haskins saga, all that. <laughs> um. Where we are now, I have, I mean, we're pretty close to, I mean, on the cusp of a B plus, A minus. Like, we couldn't have gone into the season at a lower point with all the Dan Snyder stuff going on with, like, the cheerleaders, the name, everything. Like, we were getting drugged or dug through the mud, like, with all the media and everything. Everyone was against us. And you look at um, just, like, the media's, response to the game yesterday everyone was loving Heineke they're rooting for us kind of like I've never seen that in my entire like it felt like everyone was against us like every time I watched football game before this year but it seemed like with Alex Smith with Ron Rivera beating cancer like all that stuff all those feel-good stories like people actually kind of had our back and again I walked into the season expecting maybe a couple more wins in the last season five wins six wins so to compete for a division, compete in that playoff game, finding, I mean, like, I, I don't know how you feel about this man, but Cameron Curl, our seventh round mm-hmm. pick, love him. Just finding guys like that, like Gibson. I mean, we have pieces, Chase Young, we have pieces to build off of. And I'm very excited for next season. I think if we, if it happens to be Heineke or if we roll out another QB, I think we could build a lot off this season and, I'm excited. I think A minus is if what I'd have to go with. Yeah. I, I don't want to overreact. Okay. I was texting some friends after the game. I don't want to overreact. I want to relax. I think there's a couple places that Deshaun Watson can go. And I seriously think that Washington's one of the biggest places. We got huge salary cap, ton of draft picks, ton of weapons. Everybody wants to come to Washington. I also like Matt Stafford. No beach. You're the new GM of the Washington football team. We got the great president, the new president, but we're looking for a GM. Heineke's a free agent. Are you trained for Deshaun Watson, giving up a ton of picks, trained for Stafford? I don't think you'd have to give too much, or uh, you really think because of that one game, he was electric. But I I don't know if I want to overreact. Are you rolling into next season with Heineke? What are you doing? Um. I definitely re-sign him no matter what, no matter what happens, but I definitely – I mean, put your toes in the water a little bit with Deshaun Watson, see what's out there, see what you can do. I, I don't, I, so there's three big names in my mind. It's Dak, even though it leaves a terrible yeah. taste in my mouth. I like this guy. Chris, Chris loves Dak. Yeah. Dak, Deshaun Stafford. You've got to try for one of them. See what happens. We strike out. I think we re-sign Heineke, draft a guy in the mid rounds. And I think, I don't know what's going to happen with Smith next year. I don't, if he's still on the books, still there, great mentor for Heineke, great mentor for the rookie. It is what it is. It is a huge hit to the cap. But, I mean, so if we can't hit one of those three big guys, i definitely say, I mean, Heineke, draft a mid-late guy, mid, mid-round mid guy, and then keep Smith, see what happens, roll it out. I agree. I think that's pretty fair. I mean, 
Yeah, I'm not sure how much I would change from that. Like, I mean, like you said, if if you sign Heineke, it's not like okay, he had the one great game. It's not like he's he's gonna be. Um, I would I wouldn't imagine he would be against signing a place where he's not guaranteed a starting job because that's that he's not gonna get that anywhere. So, no. like he said after the game, of course, I like Ron Rivera. I want to stay in Washington. Um, you know, you can't sign him as a backup and, and then kind of see how it plays out from there in training camp. And, um, but I, I mean, exactly like you said, if you can get Stafford, Watson, uh, Dak, I mean, any of those guys, you have to do it. And it's Definitely. funny. Cause like I was, you know, no more football for me on Sundays for a long, long time. So I was taking a look at our schedule and we finished seven and nine. And I was looking, if we just had a Stafford, a Dak, one of those QBs, or even Heineke. I mean, there's so many games where if we just had average to above average QB play, we win that so easily. And no it's so sad to look at that we had to play Dwayne Haskins more than once. The fact that he yeah. saw the field more than once was a shame to this entire organization. So no doubt. No doubt. I, I, I agree with that. You look at the Lions game, you look at the Giants game. I mean, that, that's just too off the top of my head. And I can even look back, like you said, and there's definitely more of that. One thing with Heineke that I want to note, I love the Heineke talk because he was, I mean, on Twitter, everybody was talking about Heineke. Literally every tweet, he was that good. It was even a phenomenon. Patrick, I mean, it, it was crazy. Even Patrick Mahomes shouted him out. Heineke has played. He's played in four games, four games are okay. So he's made, he played one game with the Houston Texans. He made one start with the Carolina Panthers and then played he for played, the Patriots. He did play for the Patriots. He did play for the Patriots. And then he, of course he played in the one game for us on the regular season start of the playoff game. So he's made two starts. So with the Houston Texans in 2017, he enters into the game for an inner, for an injured Tom Savage. Okay. Plays a few plays, gets a concussion. He's out. 2018, he makes his first start with Carolina. Injures his elbow, has to have surgery. He's out of the game. With us, in the playoffs, he got hurt, went into the locker room. He's played a lot of time in three games. So looking into next season, his three biggest games of his career, he left two of them with injury, had to get surgery, had a concussion one of the times. This time had an injured shoulder, came back, but who knows if he could have played next week. Obviously, I mean, the adrenaline must have been crazy. So that's interesting to, to adrenaline, know. Adrenaline, drugs, who knows? Oh, what oh I don't – I mean, when he went into the, the locker room. The but, Aaron Rodgers, he comes out at the end of the game with the Southern accent like Aaron Rodgers at yeah, one time. I don't yeah. know what he got injected. They gave, him, Yeah, they gave him about five cortisone shots. Who <laughs> knows what they gave him in that locker room? I mean, he, he had to have been – but that, yeah, that was crazy. And I seriously do think he outperformed Tom Brady. One thing I always go about CB about, no, Tom Brady, was there one throw during the game? And CB, you can reply after Noah backs me up here, hopefully. There was not one throw during that game that you go, wow, what a throw by Tom Brady. I think there was one. I know Chris Godwin had a few drops, but these receivers were open by 15, 20 yards. I mean, this is just Tom Brady his whole career, man. As he much as I love Tom Brady slander, there was one that immediately came to the one. top of my brain was when he threw it over Kendall Fuller to Mike Evans, streaking down the field. He did. That was pretty good. Yeah. There's nothing. But I mean, that, yeah, other than that, I mean, we had a lot of like blown coverages, people falling, a lot of that. But to be fair, I mean, he did have a couple drops. I mean, Godwin. this this is this is unbelievable by la every week it's ne it's never enough it's never enough 84.4 qbr i mean wow. 381 yards and, and you talk all year you talk about the defense the d line the defense we got uh, kendall fuller all that but then when it comes to brady it's it's these guys are wide some of them were open some of them were but some of them weren't i mean come on come on he had 10 seconds to throw every ball. He had 10 seconds to throw every ball. I think, yeah, line. that was the most disappointing thing for me watching was. that game is, I mean, if we could have just pressured Brady, I mean, that changes the entire game. And it looked like on the first drive, we at least got to him twice. And then after that, it wasn't until the very 
end of the game where we started getting sacks. So like, yeah, that can't happen. Definitely. There's a lot of other things that happen in the game that I would love to go on, but. It's so cliche, but it's so true. And, and, you know, if you watch uh, sports center or the pregame shows the last 20 years for these Patriots games every year, they say the same thing. They say, Hey, you got to get interior pressure. You got to get pressure on Tom Brady. That's how you beat them. And it's true. We saw it with Denver. I mean, all those years um, with the giants pass rush, pass rush in the super bowl. That's how Tennessee last you year. beat. Okay. That's how you beat Tom <laughs> Brady. I mean, he's not the most mobile guy. Um, and that's why the matchup was a little uh, kind of scary as someone who would like to see, the Bucs beat the Washington football team. It was, I mean, this is one of the best D lines in football. So it it was, I was very surprised at um, kind of the lack of a factor that it was. I thought not that it was a lack of a factor, but I thought it would be a lot more. Not even like we couldn't even pressure him, but Leonard Fournette, we made him look like he, I don't even know. He was a star player out there. He was at pull averaging probably like six yards a carry against us. It was disgusting was it was our our guy we get our guy on ethan noon for mo money all the time big jacksonville jaguars fan i know it's shocking there's a jacksonville jaguar fan he has been ripping leonard fournette all season and then you're right that was probably one of the more frustrating points of the game fournette was just it was unbelievable what he was doing and that was one of our strong sets during the season so that was frustrating but overall overall I really think we played pretty well. I mean, I hate losing. There's no complaints about it, but we went to the playoffs. We lost to Tom Brady by a touchdown. And honestly, we were in it the whole time. And it's going to be interesting to see what we do with Heineke. But I, I, I don't think we can be mad at all. I don't think we can be mad at all. No, I'm not. Honestly, the one of the most impressive things about Heineke was, I mean, Todd Bowles was sending – six seven people every time and he just remained poised like his pocket presence was so i mean it was phenomenal really and he could step up he could scramble he just he felt he looked good in there i mean that's we haven't seen that in a while so it was it was fun to watch and yeah i mean after the game we lost and i kind of felt like i was i knew like there's a point where i was like all right this game's over and i thought there would be a lot more disappointment, a lot more sadness, but it really was just like, we played a great game on Saturday night football. Like that's, I've been a Redskins fan for 15 years. We usually shit the bed right there. So, I mean. Exactly right. I mean, seriously, we go into it, the NFC East, everybody thinks we're going to make a mockery of it. We've been killed all year. The Bears just made a mockery of themselves today. Steelers were a joke, but we held our own. And that's all I can ask for, CB. And you, you can't even rip on me that much. You can't even rip on me that much. And I'm, I'm, I can't be mad at what happened. My team made the playoffs. Your team didn't. We have a franchise QB. Your team does not. Wow. Uh, we're okay. We're One winning. Game. You're losing. One game. All right. We'll see. We'll see. We're winning. You're losing. But Noah Beach, thank you so much for backing me up. Thank you for coming on. Definitely come on again. Definitely come on again. We loved having you. And yeah, CB was very subtle. He was not attacking me. We, it was two against one. And I, I think we won this. I think we won this battle. So. Well, you, you can thank Noah for that. He's, <laughs> he's a nice, uh, calming presence. You kind of antagonized me a little bit, but I, but I, I like Noah. So I add, I do what I can. I do what I can. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the viewers know that Taylor Heineke is better than Tom Brady. We got that. We made that clear from the get-go, and I think it's done. I think it's good to go. But um, definitely, that's it. That's it, CB. No yeah, rebuttal. I just want to leave CB. two points on the table. Um, Let's go. Tom Brady effect is totally real. One. <laughs> totally real. Uh, I mean, okay. it was disgusting the way the rest played. And oh, two. Two, I hope Isaiah Wright never sees the field again. Um, you can't drop balls like that. No. You just can't drop balls like that. It, it was – the drops were were killer. 
I, I know the I know the Bucks had a couple, but definitely right. We talked about it earlier in this episode. I talked about the refs a little bit. I'm not a complainer, but it was unbelievable, and I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up, and we we won this argument, and you just kept adding on. But it's not even my team. I, I, I mean. <laughs> I know you're an adopted Bucks fan for these playoffs. Yeah. And, and no, before you leave, Super Bowl prediction, what you got? Um, I just find it hard for anyone to stop the Chiefs. I mean, they did slow down, didn't look great the last couple of weeks to kind of get it in there. But um, I don't know, man. I don't see anyone stopping the Chiefs. And I don't want to be – I don't want to be chalk, don't want to be vanilla, but, like, I don't see anyone stopping the Chiefs and – if the Rams golf was back, maybe, but I just don't see that either. I I have a love hate relationship with Aaron Rodgers, but he is a magical, magical man, and I yeah. learned to trust that man when it comes to playoffs. I don't know about their defense, but I just don't. I don't think anyone in the NFC is that scary. I don't. Yeah. I really am not. That's what like when we were going into the playoffs, I was like. There's not really one team I don't want to face other than the Packers, but like, yeah, there wasn't yeah. anyone that was just like Saints, maybe, but Drew Brees is old. He's Rips. old. He's washed. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. He's old. He's washed. He's terrible. But okay. Taysom, I mean, Taysom did great today. I mean, I feel like everyone's got their things. Everyone's got their gripes. I mean, I don't want to say Chiefs Packers, but like, I genuinely, hey, I, that's what I said. That's what I think I that's where we're ended up. And yeah. I just – Chiefs are – their offense is one of the best things I've ever seen. I mean, they just – It's unbelievable. The package. They got the yeah. best QB, best tight end, top five wide receiver, top five running back if Hilaire's back. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, yeah. No, Beach, thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Great having you. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Like I said, had to bring on Noah Beach for some backup. Couldn't let CB beat me up about that bum Tom Brady. But thank you once again, Noah Beach. That was awesome. Great, 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 great combo with him. Seriously, great mind to talk to. That was awesome. Hope to have him on again. Going to talk about the divisional round a little bit. The matchups are locked in. There are eight teams left. First game, Browns at the Chiefs. CB, what do you think? Who you got? Got to be the Chiefs. I mean, of course, a team coming off a bye, playing at home. I don't know the last time they traveled. I think they ended with a couple home games too. So has to be the Chiefs. Right now, though, quick preview of my money. Quick, quick preview of my money. I haven't decided yet because we're doing Mo Money tomorrow morning like we did last week. Mm -hmm. um, it's Browns plus 10. Like 10 seems too much. We'll see. We'll see what E. Noon's Ooh. mortal lock is. But uh, I, I do. I mean, Chiefs have to win this game. Um, it, it seems like a no brainer. I'm not bold enough to pick the Browns, but that spread seems very big, Ooh. very big. I'm going to be tossing and turning all night thinking about that line because I was just about to say this is going to be a burial. This is going to be a blowout. The Chiefs are going to blow them out the water. The Browns stink, and the Chiefs are off, coming off a bye. A lot of their best players getting two weeks off, and they're at home, and they got some fans in there, and the Browns just played way above expectations today. But will they get the momentum in? I don't know. It's going to be a burial. It's going to be a blowout. The Chiefs are going to blow them out. I don't know about 10 points, so I don't know. Vegas they just knows. They just haven't buried many teams this year. I know, but it's For, a playoffs now. It's a playoff. I know. I know. But, but this game, it's at 3 o'clock on Sunday. That's the first AFC game. Next game, CB, Ravens at Bills. Scary game. Scary game. But uh, what are you thinking? Ravens, Bills, yeah. It's – I'm very – this, I am very excited for this game because I truly think it's a toss up. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a toss up in my mind. Um, the, the Ravens are on fire. The Bills have been on fire. I mean, they've won a bunch in a row just because they didn't win by 10. I know I said I wasn't too impressed, but they still won and beat a playoff team in the, uh, in the Colts. So we'll see. 
Um, Ravens obviously didn't mind being on the road in Tennessee. Um, we'll, I hope we get snow. I really hope we get snow in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. But uh, right now, if I had to pick, if I had to pick, you know what? You know what? Baltimore. Baltimore. Mm. It's Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, this is tough because I love the Bills. They're in my top five favorite teams. I love Bills Mafia, obviously. The YouTube, if you're watching, I got the uh, the sweatshirt. Nobody wants to play the Ravens right now. They're the hottest team in football. But the Bills, oh, it's at home. I don't know. I'm taking the Bills, but I don't feel good about it. We'll see what I do with Mo Money with the two and a half. We'll see if it's different in the morning. Tough game, if, but that one's Saturday night at 8.15. If the Chiefs win, which we both think they will. Burial. Blow up. Then we'll either get Chiefs-Ravens or Chiefs-Bills in the AFC wow. Championship. I mean, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Thank you, football. Thank you, football. Uh, if the Browns win, that'd be kind of funny, though. Rams-Packers is the uh, the NFC matchup. One seed versus six seed. Um, you know, I love the Packers. I got to roll with them here. I, I just, I need this team in the Super Bowl. I think they can definitely make it, uh, with, I mean, Rogers is the MVP, uh, Alexander, their cornerback is playing outstanding football this entire season. Um, so I, I, I still don't trust the Rams even after last week. I love Aaron Rodgers. I love this Packers team. Uh, I, I feel very good about picking them to win this game yeah i i think the 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 rams aren't that good i do think i like their backup quarterback obviously you didn't see him wofford but he played in week 17 he looked good we'll see who starts for them i'm guessing golf but we'll see how that thumb does throughout the week i think this is going to be closer than people think but the packers are going to win this it's going to be interesting to see um Devontae Adams and Jalen Ramsey going at it. But the Rams, number one scoring defense in the NFL versus the Packers, number one scoring offense. So it's going to be interesting. 435 on Saturday. This is going to be a fun one to watch. We'll see, but I'm taking the Packers. But I think it's going to be pretty close. All right, and then final game. Ooh, four games. Four games, man. We got the Bucks. At the Saints in the Superdome, third time they've played this year, third time. Saints won the first two, uh, both pretty convincingly. Week one, it was pretty convincing. And then that, uh, I think week nine, blowout, it was 38 to three. I mean, that was absurd. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I, I've been thinking about these, these past games because we're doing the episode. I haven't even thought about this game. If you know and you're ready to make the call, you go first, because I need I need a, a couple seconds to think. I'm ready. I'm locking it in. The Bucs are winning. I think the Saints are a very good team. It's it's tough for the Bucs because it's at home. I mean, at home for the Saints. But you know that the Buccaneers are my Super Bowl pick versus the Chiefs. Chiefs are going to beat the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady stinks, but the Buccaneers are going to send old man Drew Brees. Old man Rivers is out, so now it's old man Drew Brees. You have the title, washed old man Drew Brees, actually. Buccaneers are going to send him home packing. Drew Brees is going to go up to the booth. This is his last game ever. The Buccaneers will win this game. Saints, I think, are a better overall team, but you can't beat a team that is so similar to you three times. That would be the third time in one season that they beat them. Picking with my gut and not my heart. Saints win this game. Saints Mm. win this game. Um, And I'm just realizing this. Think about this. Think about this. Mm -hmm. If the Chiefs win, which we both think they do, we'll either we'll have Mahomes and either Mahomes versus Lamar, Mahomes versus Josh Allen. Okay. That's our options in the AFC. And it could be Baker, Lamar, Baker, Josh Allen. It'll be some combination of those four, right? The young guns, the young guns. If the Packers win, which we both think they do, it's either going to be Aaron Rodgers versus Brady 
or Aaron Rodgers versus Breeze. I mean, this is, I love, I'm, I'm in love with how this is setting up in that we have the young guns in the AFC, all that. That's awesome stuff. The new teams, the bills on the rise, the chiefs on the rise the past couple of years. And then we got the, the, the old man club in the NFC with Brady, with Breeze, with Rodgers. I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, give me Rogers Breeze. I'd love it to be Rogers Brady from a storyline perspective, um, but I, I think it'll be Rogers Breeze in that NFC title game in a couple of weeks. But man, maybe it's just because it's we're in the moment. It's it's the recency bias. But this is uh, this. I'm very excited for the teams that I think we could get in the uh, in the conference round in a couple of weeks. This is going to be great. Yeah, those are great points. It's going to be really fun to watch that. But yeah, that game is going to cap off the divisional round. That is 640 Sunday night, 640. So no eight o'clock game, but that'll be 640 Sunday night, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Next, we're going to get into un poquito, a little bit of the NBA, because frankly, NFL is going on. A lot of politics going on. MLB news is happening Nobody really cares about the NBA right now, to be frank, to be put pretty frank. I will get into it a lot more. Still watching my Wizards, sadly. I have to wash my eyeballs after every single game. Um, But the NBA will pick up once again after the NFL is over and everything else is going on. But, yeah, the NBA right now, it's not in a lot of news, but – the one thing that is pretty newsworthy, the, the COVID. The COVID is bad. But they said they're not going to shut down the season. One game was delayed tonight, Celtics heat. Um, but they said they're not going to shut it down for now. Yeah, we'll see what they do from a bubble's perspective. I can't imagine the players want a bubble, especially the ones that were in the playoffs last year and, and had to spend a couple months uh, literally like alone in a hotel room um, just to – to give us something to watch on TV. I, I can't imagine they want to do like a whole half of a regular season in a bubble, but we'll see what happens because it, it, it might, the situation might force uh, their hand and, and we'll see what happens there. But like you said, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad right now. Dwight Howard's playing point guard. Yeah. That was crazy. That was crazy. The, the 76ers, they had like, six people play yesterday because of COVID it's crazy. Not everybody's getting COVID, but they have a pretty strict uh, contract tracing contact tracing Um, pretty strict contact tracing guidelines. I think I got it that time. So we'll see what happens with the NBA, but yeah, the, the 76ers, they had seven players play Um, a guy by the name of, Isaiah Joe played 45 minutes for the Philadelphia 76ers yesterday. Well, Saturday, and he was a second round pick in 2020. So yeah, it's not good right now. Not good right now. Celtics are kind of cruising. Celtics are kind of cruising. And what is not good, the Wizards are two and eight. And our center, Thomas Bryant, has a torn ACL. (sighs) Not good. Not good. But yeah, we'll get a lot more into the NBA after nfl concludes and there was a ton of mlb to talk about cb awesome packed episode and we still got mo money we still got mo money so we're gonna go to that right now mo money week 13 lucky number 13 mo cast episode 41 nfl playoffs week one in the books i'll admit it vegas is smarter than us all Vegas is smarter than us. Some all. of us, so, some of us, some okay. of us, but some of these game lines were unbelievable and they worked. Vegas is smarter than us all. Some of us, some of us, because uh, Chris Blake, what's the bet you hit on on last week's Mo Money? Ravens, Titans tied at half plus eleven hundred. Thank you very much. Microsoft at a dollar fifty. Oh my god! <laughs> it was um, it was very unfortunate that this is a hundred percent sincere. It was very unfortunate that YouTube picked the Rams one because I I thought that was the better. Well, one. I told you what was going to happen. 
Yeah. Noon called it. We, I mean, we knew it was going to happen. Yep. We, we did the Rams with him and then the Titans. Well, if we had, if we hadn't happened. taken the Rams game, I don't think either of them hit. So that's true. You're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you for that. Exactly right. You're welcome. So of course, LA Rice, Chris Blake, and E Noon joining us. Updated standings for January. The January standings are now looking a lot different after Chris hit the bet plus eleven units. So now, in third place, E Noon. He's been not great bad. on the show. He, he's had some good numbers on the show. January is not going well. He's oh. four and a leg. He's four and eleven. Negative seleven point three two units. Mortal lock one and one. By the way, Noon. I'm not gonna say. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this cut nicely as nicely as possible. Okay, awesome. That's I'm sure it'll come out perfectly nice. Me and Chris, I I think we said this on the air, and we were talking a little before the uh before the air yesterday. So we're recording right now. It's noon. It's twelve eighteen on Monday. We were recording like two a.m. on Monday earlier. So we both had Steelers minus four last week, and then we remembered that you had Steelers minus four as your mortal lock. And um, we should have faded the pick just then. Well, you said that last week, too, when it happened. Let's just say let's just say we want noon to do his mortal lock first this week. That's all. (laughs) Oh, man. No, no. Noon having a bad January, but it's okay. Four and 11. Well, to be fair, the mortal locks have been bad for weeks, 13 weeks in a row. I think I've gotten, what, four right, five right? Yeah, Something like that, and it's pretty you're, bad. Yeah, you're four and eight mortal locks. Yep, that sounds about right. You know, you always have, no matter how bad it gets, you always have the just wait until March Madness card. That's because right. that's that's yeah. got to be your time. That, that's, I mean, you're, it has to be my plus, time. I'm gonna have like 25 mortal March. locks, CB. Yeah, yeah, and and hey, we we got a lot of ground to cover in January. It's, it's only January, January 11th. 11th. Yeah, Come January on. 11th. Exactly right. So noon's in last place. Four and 11. Negative 7.32 mortal locks. Fade noon. I didn't say that, but some might be saying that. <laughs> some might. The media. The media might be saying that. Number two. I am in second place. I'm 13 and 18, negative 3.57 units. Better than it looks. It hurts, hurts, hurts. I had that Kyle Trask minus two units. The Heisman Noon also had one of those. That hurts. That hurts. And um, I hate to say it, 369. Yeah, I, I. so Noon is actually, he is actually negative. 8.32 units for January. Forgot to mention that you also had Kyle Trask, but looking on the bright side, looking on the bright side, CB is in first place plus 6.7, 6.74 units in January. Even though he's three and six, he had the half half time. So CB is bullying and he's in first overall negative 9.07 units, 33, 44 and two. I am in second place. I'm 73, 87, and two, negative 16.08 units, seven and three on the mortal locks. So seven and three on the mortal locks. E noon is in third now after a, a rough start to January, but a lot of room to go. He's 50, he's 55, 62, and two, negative 16.97 units, four and eight on the mortal locks. So CB, first place. Kick us off, man. Kick us off. Wow, what a feeling. Um, All right, I'll just get straight into my picks. We already talked about the bet. Um, Oh, man. Okay, first one. Here we go, kicking it off. Packers, money line, minus 350. I don't think there's any chance the Rams win this game, so I'm trying to build my units. I'm trying to get that, uh, you know, I think it'll be like plus like 0.3, something like that. For the money line, minus 350, I'm a little scared of minus seven. If I'm being completely honest, I'm a little scared of minus seven. However, however, money line, I feel pretty secure with uh, with Aaron Rodgers handling it over there. Next one, Browns, plus 10 and a half. It was plus 10 on one place, plus 10 and a half on another. So I'll take the plus 10 and a half. Yes, please. Uh, it's minus 120, so a little worse than the minus 110 or so you would get for a regular. But Cleveland, 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 we saw what they did against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now, I mean, they're facing the Chiefs off a of bye. Chiefs are at home. I know all that, but they haven't really blown many people out this whole season. I mean, they've had a lot of a lot of games that are, you know, 
within a touchdown at the end of the game, which this clearly 10 and a half would work. So I feel okay about that. Um, Chiefs defense, not what it was last year during their Super Bowl run. I still, you know, they're my pick for the AFC, but uh, I, I'll take the 10 and a half points with, uh, with Cleveland and uh, hope that Kevin Stefanski is back then. Ravens plus three. It's plus two and a half. I bought a point or a half a point to make it plus three because that's, I mean, that could be a big deal if they lose by field goal, of course. So it's minus 130. Um, but I, I picked the Ravens straight up to win earlier when we talked about this game uh, for our previews. And, and we said, Bills, Ravens, who you got? And I said, Ravens. That's what my gut was telling me. So if I'm getting the points here, obviously I got to like that. Um, but there's a little security, a little security blanket. I bought that extra half a point. Um, and yeah, let's, let's rock. Let's rock Ravens. I got one more pick. It is my lock. Um, I thought about sprinkling the, uh, the Buccaneers money line, but I'm not sure how good I feel about that. So I'll just, I'll just let it sit. All right. All right. Teaser of the week is incoming. I bet. I don't know. I haven't seen the mortal lock, but fade CB on the teasers. You know how it goes. (laughs) I'm kicking it off this week. Like I said, Vegas outsmarted me like crazy, but you get one week, you adjust. That's what the greats do, and that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off on college basketball. Haven't made picks in a long time ever since I got beat up. I think I picked like three or four college basketball games, lost them all. I am picking this game solely based off of a guy that I follow on Twitter. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to give free shout-outs. He does work for Barstool Sports. And he is nine and one on his last college basketball picks. Nine and one. So I'm going with him on this game tonight. UConn is playing DePaul. DePaul is at home. UConn's a very good basketball team. They just broke into the top five. And DePaul is scuffling. They're one and three. Um, I really like UConn here. UConn's five and oh against the spread in their last five games. DePaul's a couple injuries also. I really like UConn. They've won three in a row. DePaul's lost three in a row. UConn minus five versus DePaul. Then I'm going the national championship game. I had picks from last week. I saw my mortal lock waiting on tonight. I'm the mortal lock king. So take that pick. I'm the mortal lock king. The um, mortal lock that I have tonight is Alabama minus one and a half versus Ohio State and over 69 on the teaser. But that was a pick from last week. That was a pick from last week. But this week, I'm taking one more pick with Alabama. I'm going their team total over 41 points. I think they're going to score at least 41 points. I don't think Ohio State is that bad, but Alabama is a much better ball team, and I really think they're going to score 41, 45 points. Confident in that over 41 points for Alabama. You can get that as minus 110. CB mentioned it before the pod. Chris stops Porzingis, the unicorn. He is back tonight versus the Pelicans. And I like the Mavericks, even if he didn't play. The Mavericks are minus three. I'm doing great on the NBA picks. I, I, was, I think I was five and two last week. I was also a positive record the week before that and opening week. I'm feeling good, 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 good with the NBA. Mavericks minus three at home. Porzingis is back. Steven Adams is beat up. Love the Mavericks minus three and the Pelicans. I love them. I never want to bet against them noon. You know, I love the Pelicans, but they're scuffling a little bit right now. I think they've lost like three. They've lost like three straight games when the game was down to the last possession, last minute. So, so three points, three points. Let's say Mavericks is up two. you foul them. Luca makes both free throws. They win by four. Let's ride. There you go. Let's ride. Next game, magic plus 10 at home versus the Milwaukee Bucks, Magic are beat up and they're not playing well, but Inu knows. We've talked about it. Magic at home. Magic at home. Nobody's beating. Well, the Bucks will win. They'll beat the Magic at home, but eh, who knows? The Magic could shock them. Magic plus 10 versus the Bucks at home. Everybody's going to be on the Bucks here. The Magic are beat up. Bucks are playing pretty well. Taking the Magic at home plus 10. And NFL, I'm kicking it off. Browns Chiefs, Chiefs minus 10 versus the Cleveland Browns. I was torn last night. I told CBS and I'm going to be tossing and turning 
all night long thinking about this pick, but I slept great. I slept great, so I'm confident in the Chiefs minus 10 versus the Browns. It's going to be a burial. It's going to be a blowout. I mean, the Browns stink. They're terrible at football, so I'm taking minus 10. Vegas has it at minus 10 because everybody's thinking what I'm thinking. This is going to be a burial. This is going to be a blowout, but they see minus 10 in a divisional NFL playoff game, and they're like, eh, I'm going with the Browns. No, Chiefs are still going to win by more than 10 points. Next game, Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the New Orleans Saints. I think Tampa Bay wins this game, but I'm taking the plus three. I think the Saints are a better team. I really do. And they're at home, but Tom Brady is better than Drew Brees right now. He is. He is better than Drew Brees right now. Drew Brees still had a better (laughs) career. But old man Drew Brees, I mean, he's terrible. And the Saints have beaten the Bucs twice. You can't beat a great team three times. You can't beat a great team three times. What if the Bucs aren't great? What if they're just good? You can't beat them three times. I mean, they they almost almost let a quarterback on a week of practice come in and beat them. Hey, I know, but the Tyler Taylor Heineke magic. I mean, come on. Come on. It, it, you know, it does remind me a lot of Gardner Minshew. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in terms of like, oh, he about comes in too. and all of a sudden he's like the guy. You know what I yeah. mean? So mm. I like that. You're right. You're right. I'm also taking Tampa Bay money line plus 150. So I got plus three and plus 150. And the plus three, I'm seeing it at minus 105 odds. So pretty, pretty good right now. Then I am taking, I have one game as my mortal lock. Then I have Rams versus Packers minus seven. I had the Rams last week versus the Seahawks. My only pick that worked in the NFL. So I am taking the Packers minus seven because it's at home. Rams are going to be playing in the cold. Rams have a great defense, but I think the Packers do win this game by more than a touchdown. Packers minus seven. Then I have a teaser. I have a teaser. Yes, I'm back after taking a week off. I'm now two and one on the teasers. I'm taking Tampa Bay plus nine and Packers minus one. Minus 120 odds, but that's my teaser of the week. Then I got a more to lock. He knew what you got. Quick stat. Can I throw a quick stat? Go for it. Quick stat. Chiefs, biggest margin of victory since week. Uh, oh, got to add up the weeks real quick. 17, 16, 15. Since week nine, their biggest margin of victory, six points against the Denver Broncos. Vegas wants you to get the Browns, exactly. Vegas wants you to take the Browns, exactly right. All right, so the NHL's back this week, and nobody seems to care, whatever. I care. I I guess. Uh, You care, I appreciate it, because the NHL's back, and I am very, very excited. So I start on Wednesday, the Caps play on Thursday, so, obviously, I'm taking the Cavs money line, minus 135 versus the uh, Sabres. I almost called them the Bills. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are sleeping on the Cavs this year, rightfully so. They were terrible in the bubble. Uh, I mean, they were awful. They were so bad against the Islanders in that series. They were bad in the games leading up to that. The report came in, said they were using it as a vacation. They didn't want to be there. I think the Caps are ready to come out this year. I think they're ready to play well. They, they made a lot of signings that are really going to help in the locker room. Chara is the most notable of those. He's, he was a longtime captain of the Bruins. He's known for his toughness. I think he's going to be a breath of fresh air in that locker room. I think everybody in there has something to prove. I, I, I genuinely do. And they're minus 135 against a Buffalo team that has been terrible for so long. Ever since Ryan Miller left, they've been bad. I, Ryan, saying Ryan Miller's name really makes me feel old because he hasn't been good in 10 years. And somehow he's still in the league, or not anymore, but is he? Maybe. He was backing up for the Ducks for like five years. Whatever, not the point. Cavs minus 135 versus the Sabres. My next pick is the Hurricanes minus 200 versus the Red Wings. The Red Wings are going to be the worst team in the league. They're in a ter- they're in a brutal division. They might not win 10 games. It's going to be bad. They might win maybe eight games. I wouldn't be surprised. They were the worst team in NHL history last year. They didn't get the number one overall pick. Those poor guys. I feel terrible for them, but they're so bad. They're they're the worst team, and the Hurricanes are young and they're fast, and they're a pain to the all the league. Whoever has to play the Hurricanes, I remember playing them two years ago in the playoffs. They're fast, and they'll beat you at your own game. So minus two hundred is pretty generous. I think they should be minus five hundred. Okay, 
We'll go to I, I actually have UConn minus five versus DePaul. Yeah. Uh it really UConn has come along. It's long not your way. mortal lock, right? It's not my mortal lock. No, okay. you don't have to change the pig. Uh, okay. They have Coach Hurley over there. Love <laughs> Coach Hurley. Uh, that was just disrespectful to even ask. I, I mean, come on, it's college basketball. Come on. Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, that's my only college basketball picked up because there's only lines out for tonight, which is weird. Yeah. Um, and then the national championship. I'm going Bama minus eight and a half. I found it at minus eight and a half. Uh, they're the better team. LA mentioned it. They're, they're just a better ball club. Ohio State. Uh, they. I think they beat a Clemson team. That's that was a little overhyped. I mean, mm-hmm. they, to be honest, they had Trevor Lawrence, but outside of maybe Travis Etienne at running back, they had nothing on defense. I think Bam is different. Bam is always different. The SEC, baby, come on, real football. You know, I think I think Fields has a tough game tonight. Uh, I don't think he has a, the success that he had against Clemson. And then I also have the Bama Ohio State over seventy-five points. I know LA has the over sixty-nine. I have the over seventy-five. I think this game is like a fifty to thirty-five type game. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be huge. Not much defense will be played. And then give me Bama money line minus three twenty just to pad the the record a little bit. And then I have one NBA game. I'm taking the Trailblazers minus five versus the two and seven Raptors. Oscar Siakam is not a star. Yeah. Uh, he's down there in the lane. He's spinning around like a fidget spinner. <laughs> uh, he's just I don't know how they thought that they'd be successful post Kawhi with with Kyle Lowry and Siakam as their two best players. They let Ibaka go. LA and I have talked about this. Abaka was super important to that team. Reminds us of the Jeremy Grant leaving the Nuggets. Uh, he's he's just a, one of those glue guys who does a little bit of everything. So mm-hmm. give me Blazers minus five. Dame and CJ are gonna are gonna beat them bad. And for the NFL, I'm going with CB. Convince me. I'm going with the Browns. No, plus 10. no, no. Come on, man. No. I'm going with Browns plus ten. No. CB, CB, CB. It's not as mortal lock. It's not my mortal lock. You're fine. Oh, 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 oh. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> such an overreaction. I actually could not believe it. That was so brutal. Wow. Okay. Wow. Noon I, you know, is, noon is hurt. I, right, in my right, in my heart. I mean, <laughs> oh man. If the Browns lose, though, like, you know, if the rounds get blown out, then, you know, CB can yell at me. It's whatever. Uh, like CB just said, the stat speaks for itself. Uh, Mahomes and the Chiefs, they've, well, well, since what week was it, CB? They haven't won by more than six? Nine. Week nine. That's a lot of games. I mean, that's a lot of close games. And LA's boy, Baker Mayfield, he's <laughs> playing. He looks good. Although, I will say the Steelers, they, they, they stink. So, you know. Uh, and then I'm taking the Chiefs and Browns over 56 as well. Uh, I think we saw last night the Browns defense. I mean, they almost threw that game away. If Mike Tomlin wasn't a yeah. coward and he went for that fourth and what was it, fourth and one? Yeah. Inside the other team's field with like 13 minutes left, down by, what was it, 12 or 13? How do you not go for that? Mm-hmm. I mean, wild move. Absurd. It's an all time terrible move. And. Anyway, yeah, I, the the the, Brown, the Browns almost threw that game away. Their defense got gashed up pretty bad by the washed up Big Ben. So 56 points is pretty generous. I'm taking that over in that, and then I'm taking the Packers minus seven versus the Rams. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to destroy them. I want to see Jalen Ramsey get burned by Devontae Adams. Not gonna happen. Yes, it will. And then I'm taking the Packers money line minus 330, padding the record, and that is all for me. All right, um, let me real quick add one game, add one game to, uh, you know what? Let me, let me add two, two picks, two picks. First one um, before my mortal lock, Chiefs money line uh, minus 500, I believe I'm looking at right now, minus 500. Um, and then I'm also going to toss in there a future, my third futures bet. Packers to win the NFC championship plus 120 um, because I'm so confident in their game this week. I'm basically in my head. I'm basically just betting. Okay. Next week, wherever they play, they win. I'm getting that plus 120. Um, so I think there's, there's value there. Packers to win NFC 
plus 120. Okay, I'm more to lock. Super quick teaser. You know the drill. Packers minus one. Browns plus 16 and a half. Um, already talked about both those individually. So I'm just boosting the points on uh, each of them. I don't know, man. Something's going to go wrong. Something's going to go wrong. That's what they want you to CB think, Larry. A teaser. That's what they want you to think. CB did a teaser, though. So okay, something's well, going to go fair wrong. Fair enough. Fade, fade the teaser. I'm actually the adding it. Yeah. I'm actually, I, I might do the opposite now. <laughs> no. Do it. Do no. it. No. I I'm I'm adding two games to my card because I do care the NHL is back noon. I really do. I, I respect the, that. Yep. You had the caps minus one thirty five. I'm doing caps minus one and a half. That would boost it to plus two hundred. Hockey and baseball, it's tough with the one and a halves, but I'm I, I really like I don't know, man. Odds, plus the caps 200. the caps love playing one goal games. Yeah. They love it. I know. It's it's tough, but I hate the minus one and a halves, but I'm taking it plus two hundred. Then I got a parlay. I got Caps money line, Hurricanes money line, Yukon money line, Alabama money line parlay. Wow. That is a plus 402, plus 4.02 units if all those hit. And I feel pretty good with those. But my ship could, my ship could be sunk by the time you're listening to this. So moving on, more to lock. Bills minus two and a half versus the Ravens. Everybody's going to be on the Ravens like CB. This is what Vegas wants you to think. You think, wow, the Bills, they struggled against the Colts. Ravens are the hottest team in football. I'm still taking the Bills at home minus two and a half. Lamar's playing great. Lamar finally won a playoff game. Wow, the Ravens, they look really good. No, the Bills are going to win. Minus two and a half, Mortal Lock King. I'm going to win the Alabama Mortal Lock tonight and this one. Then I'm going to be nine and four on the mortal locks nine and four e noon who you got and we'll go to our okay top um of the week you inspired me that parlay is really good i Thank like you. it a lot and i'm gonna add to that parlay so i'm taking all four mm. of your games and then i'm gonna add uh mm, i'm gonna add the packers money line mm. and i'm gonna yeah. add Oh, man. I'm going to add the Bama and OSU over 75. Wow. Okay. I'll, I'll add that up. I'll add that up right, while, you, you. while you do your mortal lock. All right. Uh, I don't have a mortal lock this week. Okay. Wow. I have decided for the first time on the show, I'm not doing a mortal lock. I just <laughs> got, as you just saw in the last 15 minutes, I made two bets where they both thought I might have been my mortal lock, and they both freaked out. I was verbally assaulted. CB had a CB had a uh, I don't even know what he had, but he was terrified that I had the, his mortal lock that he had as a pick, and he was gonna fade it. I mean, it was unbelievable. So I'm not doing a mortal lock. My feelings are hurt. I'm crushed. I don't think we're friends, and I'm sad. No, oh. no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. Okay. I'm it's sorry. Okay. I get you it. Know what hey. I, you know what? You know what? I want to make it up to you. I want to make yeah, it up you to do. you. Our top five football players we wish we could have seen. We tied. We tied in the uh, in the poll. So you know what? I want you to go first. Wow, that's nice of you. That, that makes up for me being assaulted on the spot about my mortal lock. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Nothing will ever make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, all right. I'll start with number five. I'm going with Joe Montana. He's a lot of people's goat. Uh, he was. He was just everything you could ask for in a quarterback. My number four is Walter Payton. I've always loved watching or just hearing about Walter Payton play. I wish I could have seen him play. Number three, Barry Sanders. He retired too soon. Although mm-hmm. I guess you could argue that was smart on his part. He just, he's probably healthier than anybody else that's ever played in the NFL. My number two is the best receiver of all time, Jerry Rice. Sorry, oh. Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. And my number one is Lawrence Taylor, the best defensive player to ever step on the field. He was just, he's the goat to everybody defense. And he probably would still be insanely good today, which is impressive because you can't say that about most past players. Yeah. Completely fair, except for one of those. I wonder Um, which one. My number five is Lawrence Taylor. Actually, very glad Noon said that. Um, Yeah, like like you said, I mean, one of the, the most dominant players of all time, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We see Aaron Donald today, like, let me see Lawrence Taylor and what he did 
um, back then. Number four, Terrell Owens, T.O., kind of electric, um, insanely good at football. He's in that, you know, top three, top four for wide receivers. Number three, I got Ty Law, a little bit of Patriots bias here, but I've always wanted to see Ty Law, uh, the three interception game against Peyton Manning, all that. So I needed a dominant lockdown corner on my list. And uh, I picked him over Deion Sanders because, you know, Pats go Pats. Number two, Barry Sanders, E. Noon, uh, you oh. nailed it. I mean, this guy. CB, can I interrupt guy. real quick? Yeah. The Mavericks Pelicans game has been postponed. So, no, Larry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Another postponement on your picks. Come I on. I figured I'd, I'd break that news to you. I'm sorry. Breaking news. <sighs> breaking news. Only here. Only here. Yeah, on the MoCast, your source for uh, breaking news Absolutely. when we put this out in a couple hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, number two, Barry Sanders. Uh, I, I need this guy making jukes and making spin moves on a 4K TV. I mean, oh, imagine yeah. that. Incredible. Uh, number one is the greatest receiver of all time, <sighs> Randy Moss. Randy yeah. Moss, of course. Uh, you know, I Viking, mean, he played, yeah. he played yeah, until, right. what, like 2012, something like yeah. that, 2010. So, yeah, like, oh, sure, we saw him play, but I, I want to see, like, 2003 to 2007. Like, let me I liked see it that, better when he was with the Vikings. Yeah. Well, you know. My list. I want... <laughs> Combining Listen. the two top fives we've done, I need a Randy Moss in the red Patriots throwback jersey. That's oh, all. yeah. Uh, yep, that would be That's clean. pretty cool. So, yep. E. Noon's parlay. So, it's Caps, Carolina, UConn, Alabama money line, Packers money line, Alabama over 75, correct? Yes. That's plus 11.49 units if it hits. I'm getting back in the race in January. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I need it. Throw in so a tie my to half. top Five. I'm kicking it off. Walt it Payton. Sweetness. <laughs> Sweetness at number five. Man, I would have liked to watch him play. And yeah, he did leave too soon. But, you know, same with Barry Sanders. He also left too soon. Number four, John Riggins. A little bit one. of a homer pick, but I would have loved one. to see him break some skulls. He was a power back. Number three, slinging Sammy Ball. He was a cornerback. He was a quarterback. And he was a kicker. He's that good. <laughs> number three. Number two, Jerry Rice, greatest receiver of all time. That's right. Number one, Enoon, Lawrence Taylor. Let's go. You know, I watch his videos to hype me up. He was one crazy, crazy dude, and he just played football by chance. And he was nuts. He was nuts. He was on crack, literally, during he games. He was, yeah. And he was just unbelievable. So Walter Payton, John Riggins, Sammy Ball, Jerry Rice, LT, Lawrence Taylor, MoCast episode 41. Mo Money, week 13 in the books. Let's get back in the winning column. Vegas, you guys are smart. We're smarter. We're smarter. We have a week under our belt. We're going to do it. MoCast episode 41, packed episode. Good stuff. Peace out. Peace out.